Well, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Breakfast with Boom. I am your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And my goodness, we have another week of opening the show with breaking news. But before we get into it, and again, folks, take it easy. We understand that it has somewhat been debunked by Square Enix. I have the press release I'm going to you know, read live on the air. But there is also something to be said about the whole saying or the old saying about where there's smoke, there is fire. King David, welcome back to the program. You know something? It should be Prophet David because a lot of the things that you've been saying on ILP for many, many months are starting to come to fruition. And I think that it comes, I think we're almost on the cusp of Phil Spencer getting an additional name. Someone had said Bruticus, and I think nah, it rolls he, off the tongue. His name is done. He's 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 Phil Dominus Maximus Aurelius Spencer. He gets no more names. It's it's a reason <laughs> behind why he has those names. But you know, some people out here calling him Phil Dominus Rex, all types of wild <laughs> names. Um I and I, I, I truly applaud it. Um he has graduated from um a monarch and uh uh, a general or empire or uh, like a uh, Roman Caesar type of uh, individual to at this point in time, he has become a bond villain. Um, oh, more- I, I love the, I, I love the correlation of when you said that, you know, you're going to elaborate on yeah. <laughs> exactly why he's a bond villain because he's lulling you into a full sense of reality <laughs> oh, boy. of safety of, uh, <laughs> of comfort. And he's doing it in a way that when you are enjoying it, you don't understand that he is uh, he's slowly ro- ruling the world. And when I say the world, we're talking about the gaming world, folks. Yes. I mean, it is it is pretty. But th- th- again, listen, uh, big, big, you know, y- you've done some amazing things in the last couple of weeks. Uh, specifically, uh, you you did you killed it in the last f- uh, couple of weeks with ILP. You've had some big guests on. Uh, you know what you guys are doing over there is nothing short of incredible. If you're not subscribed to the Iron Lords podcast, and obviously you are doing something wrong. And then, of course, you followed that up with uh, you jumping on to our very good friend Gaz's show yeah. uh, with, uh, you know, um, the other day on Game On Daily. And uh, my God, it was pretty epic. Uh, it was great to hear from you. And, you know, obviously it was a laugh riot like I expect is going to happen today. So welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Boom. You know when you call, I come a running. <laughs> well, I definitely appreciate it. And again, this this your arrival today could not have been better timed, uh, to be honest with you, because a lot of the things that we have talked about that people poo pooed and called us lunatics for suggesting are coming mm-hmm. to fruition. And uh, we got a big topic that I think is going to. Uh, really uh, shake the industry at its core, uh, and uh, I think it's going to happen. I, I think that we're going to get into, again, coming from a businessman's point of view, which you usually bring to the table, there's a reason why. This isn't fanboy clickbait. This is actual uh, potentially something that's going to happen because they have to make it happen. And, of course, I'm talking about uh, PlayStation exclusives coming to Game Pass, And I think we're going to break down why I think and King and many people on this panel think that is going to happen. And we're going to bring the facts. It isn't going to be, hey, listen, we're just looking for clicks or, you know, for views. We're actually going to tell a story that's going to make sense. So sit back, folks, and get ready for one hell of a show. But I want to introduce our next guest, Logan Meyer. Now, if you don't know who Logan is, again, shame on you. Uh, He writes for uh, the Iron Lords uh, website, which, of course, is... Uh, an incredible uh, publication that keeps it real. Uh, yeah. Lordsofgaming.net is a site that get, that I go to because their writers are legit. Um, everyone there is prideful in the work that they produce. They do not do clickbait. They go out of their way to make sure that everything is double and triple check. Logan, you are one of the contributors to this incredible website that has seen significant growth. First of all, thank you for what you do there, but thank you for being here today. How are you feeling? Well, I'm I'm feeling great on this blessed day. This should be a wild ride, so I'm looking forward to it. But um, yeah, uh, thank you. It, it really means a lot. I take pride in my work, and the other writers for the site have been killing it as well, and this is going to be fun topics today, so I'm looking forward to it. 
Well, I, I'm I'm happy to have you here. And Crispy Bomb, obviously, Crispy, he's no stranger to uh, you know being here during Fire Podcasts because he's on Breakfast of Boom each and every week. Crispy, welcome back to the program. I'm sure you're going to be bringing the bomb fire with many of the topics we're going to get into. Oh, good morning, everybody. And and yes, uh, never met you, Logan. So uh, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, this is this is going to be. Uh, very fun, and we're gonna kind of go down rabbit holes, which you know Crispy's good at. So, well, Speculation Town is a great place to go. Uh, it certainly is. And okay, so w- what we're gonna start out the show with uh, today, very simply, is the report that originally uh, came from Bloomberg, and I found out about this. Um, from several people within the community, Benji Sales, uh, who had had uh, tweeted this out, and of course I thanked him for it because there's nothing better than starting a breakfast with Boom with breaking news. And the news that he was putting out there was a story that many people picked up that was reported upon by Bloomberg. Now here's the thing. A lot of people are already poo-pooing this because Square Enix Holdings Company, LTD, has already put out a media press release regarding the situation. Uh, But, you know, the old saying of where there is smoke, there is fire comes to mind. Um, And the report simply was that there were several, uh, uh, you know, unnamed, uh, you know, companies interested in uh, acquiring Square Enix Holdings Company, LTD, and all of all, all the company that is a part of it. Uh, and of course, I have the press release, so like a professional, I'm going to read verbatim. This is, again, coming from Square Enix themselves, and it's titled Today's Media Coverage. And it says, Bloomberg has reported today that there is interest from several buyers to acquire Square Enix. However... This report is not based on any announcement by Square Enix Holdings Company LTD. We do not consider selling off the company or any part of its business, nor have we received any offer from any third party to acquire the company or any part of its business, end quote. Now, um, here's the thing, folks. Uh, We have been hearing for quite some time that... Uh, Square Enix was on the cusp of being acquired by Microsoft. This is not the first time that we have heard this. This report came out a couple of months ago. We have heard the, and I, I want I want to quote this, then uh, from several uh, insiders that know for a fact that the next acquisition for Microsoft is on the level of a Bethesda. Now you can you can put Capcom into the conversation. You can put uh, whatever, whatever your favorite flavor of the month is. Uh, but I would I would dare say that uh, Square Enix uh, is on the level uh, of of Bethesda uh, purchase. Now again, they did come out and, and and poo-poo this, but we also have to remember that when the rumors surfaced about Bethesda possibly being sold, they immediately went uh, in and did a pl- press release very similar to what we saw Square mm-hmm. do and say that we are not selling our business. No one has approached us, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's King. Okay. Before we get into the second half of the show, which is probably going to be the most fun we've probably going to have for this week, uh, we have to get into what this potentially means mm-hmm. for Microsoft, where we think this is going, why we think this is going. When you look at a deal um, like uh, what happened with Outriders, day and right. date in there. There, there, is, there is some sort of significance other than you know Square Enix didn't want to get take it on the head again like they did with Avengers. I think there's a little bit more to it mm-hmm. uh, than that. You, you, you would agree. Okay, so you hear the press release from Square Enix. We get the report from two bankers who are uh, w- familiar with the situation. Who do we believe here? Do we believe Square because they dropped a press release saying what they said? Or do we believe Bloomberg, who would n- normally never report such a, a claim if they didn't have um, proof or, or, or quality uh, you know, of information? What, what are your thoughts? Okay, so the reason why they come out and they debunked anything, because at the moment in time, if they're at the table, they don't want to devalue any stock or any value of the company. 
um, that will be something to akin of insider trading. And that has huge ramifications if uh, someone on the board uh, was to, you know, sell shares or, you know, anything of that nature. All right. So when when companies are in talks to be purchased and there's acquisitions and they're getting things in line and, you know, you have your claims adjusters and stuff like that going in, going over your files and going over everything and checking to see exactly uh, where's the fat at, where uh, does the company uh, make money? Uh, how's the books of, of the company? The first thing you want to do is make sure that the company is in a healthy state. Right. And a healthy state means there's no you know, past litigation, stuff like that, that can, you know, uh, uh, hinder the process. Now, uh, they have deals, you know, Square Enix has deals with PlayStation. And as you've seen from the Bethesda acquisition, uh, Microsoft is like, we honor those. We, you know, as you can see, the Square uh, thing it will mirror the Bethesda thing. Because Bethesda had to be first to show other companies that Microsoft will approach and will try to acquire that has other deals with uh, Sony or Nintendo to show them that, oh, no, we're, you know, a company of our word. We'll keep whatever uh, ties that you did have and whatever games that were coming out, we will uh, continue to uh, uh get those games in a timely fashion and they would definitely be up to the, you know, the grade A that you want them to be. Microsoft can't say anything. Uh, Square will put out something of this to just debunk it. And it's more of, you know, uh, spiel. They have to do this right now. And at this part of the game, when there's something to announce and it's official, then they can do it because uh, they just had a huge acquisition. They also had another twenty billion dollar acquisition in Microsoft as a whole, where they got that um, that voice recognition software yes. Yes. that they purchased. Uh, people, this is an overarching thing that is transforming right in front of you. Um, they do have Hololens that is in the medical field. That voice. Uh, uh, operating system which is dragon and stuff like that these things help people that have disabilities help uh doctors while they are are uh, operating uh help people in the field it, it has overarching things now how does it reach to us microsoft as a whole has taken an interest in xbox I know you're saying that doesn't make any sense because, you know, Microsoft makes it there. That's their stuff. No, there's different sections in Microsoft, the company as a whole and whichever is producing at the time is like your children. You look down and say, oh, you know, you're doing really good out there playing football. I didn't know you was taking it seriously. Oh, let's go get you that equipment that you need. Didn't you, didn't you want that equipment, that 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 helmet that costs five hundred dollars? Yes, Daddy. Yes. Oh, and those cleats. That's when you when when you put in the hard work. Your your parents look over to you and say, "You know what? Let me support him or her." You love volleyball that much? Let's go out there and get you uh, the, the best volleyball suits and, 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 the, and the pads and and let's let's get you proper training. Let's make this a huge success. That's why you see the Xbox uh, network is it, turning, you know, it's to building a, blocks. It, it's, it's different now. So as far as getting square, that's not the only company that Microsoft will approach because square will look at it as we will make money hand over fist. They have a, a, a service. Now, everybody wants to be the next Netflix. Everybody. Netflix is in, 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 in American homes, probably I think 89% of American homes have Netflix inside their homes. <laughs> if it's right, I don't know. But um, that's what Microsoft wants to be. They want to be inside everyone's home. So Microsoft has taken a look over. Where there's smoke, there's fire. This stuff is, this is not the only company that will you know deny claims of anything happening. But this is how Microsoft gets past the monopoly thing. 
what you guys don't understand because a monopoly is when you hold and hoard all the stuff on there's a dude your there's, there's a publisher king that has over 76 developers i don't know what the name is but they they just did another big purchase microsoft is not even close not even close to them yeah. but from from this from our skewed angle right from us our us guys PlayStation guys, Nintendo guys, and Xbox guys. We feel that we are the center of the universe. We aren't, but this is how we feel. <laughs> all right, guys. And I'm and I'm talking to you to to know this that Xbox would make sure that well, Microsoft will make sure that Game Pass is on all three of those platforms in 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 its entirety. So if they if they do have Square Enix and they're producing games for Square Enix. It won't be locked off to the Microsoft platform only if that platform happens to support Game Pass. If you're a PlayStation owner, you would not be going through what you what right now feels like agony with nothing to play. You would have stuff to play through the Microsoft Game Pass app on your PlayStation. That doesn't change how you play. It just enhances how you play, and it's the best way to play. So, you know, you don't try to beat somebody at their game. You just join them. But the Square Enix thing where there's smoke, there's fire, and I honestly believe that this stuff will be closed off by probably like June, July, um, and then we'll hear something at one of these big shows. Well, I have some breaking news. Uh, and uh, folks, get ready again. Strap in because you know what? When I do my investigations, of course, I try to get as much information. But a good uh, friend of the show, Greg J, in the chat said uh, uh, he dropped a, 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 a you know comment in the chat, like most people do, and said uh, Claude Real just tweeted something um, interesting. So I went to, of course, Claude Real. Now, if you don't know who Claude Real is, and you're an Xbox fan. Fix that at Cloverfield, K L O B R I L L E. Uh, he is, uh, he doesn't consider himself an Xbox insider, but he is a great source for Xbox news. So, this is what he just said in regards to this report. Sometimes there are gaming news which seems boring on the surface, but actually are the beginning of something ambitious and have a direct connection to Xbox that sometimes that, that that sometimes moment happened this week anyway happy weekend at <laughs> remind me of this in 28 months yeah okay so king here we go I think that, you know, I, I was getting DMs from a lot of people because I immediately went to Twitter and said, hey, listen, we're opening the show. People are like, boom, you probably shouldn't talk about it. It's been debunked by Square. You know what I say? I say I've always walked to my own drum. Thank and you. if I get booed for, for being wrong, well, you know what? Boos don't hurt. Unless you start throwing punches, then I got to, you know, do the guy, I, I got to, uh, you know, beat you down. But if no one's throwing punches and you just want to boo me for being wrong, then so be it. Okay, great. Boom, King, here didn't they boo you? When we were saying Bethesda deal is a deal, it's done. And yes. didn't they boo us yes. when they were saying, oh, please, you're wishing on a star. Microsoft won't ever $10 billion. There's no way. And there's, didn't they boo us when we said, oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And when I'm jogging, who calls me? <laughs> <laughs> i called him <laughs> I, you remember that <laughs> yes yes listen um i had my headset on and my girl was able to hear you through my headset <laughs> oh my ears my ear plugs <laughs> okay yeah it's i was i, I might have been slightly loud uh would be, would be an understatement but look here's the thing um, this is this is something that we again. If this just came out of left field, King, I would say that they were might be. Uh, you know, we might have to take this with a massive grain of salt. But I'm going to say that because we've heard this already, because we we've, we've been hearing this, because Microsoft and Satya Nadala, right after the Bethesda deal, when he was interviewed, said, "We are not done. We are always looking." to add studios and then he follows that with why should we build one when we could just buy it buy him L listen i, I want to say this one thing 
don't you didn't you find it funny when you realized that the deal that uh Sony made uh with that uh Square Enix game was two years? Yeah, mm -hmm. and you're like, wow, huh, two years that's an odd number, like two years. Like, why would Square even say yeah to that? Well, because that's, in 28 months they're gonna be owned by Microsoft. Let, let, let me tell you why. Remember that last time you was with your girlfriend, your ex? And she was like, all right, one last time. <laughs> uh, I, you can call it one last time, and we ain't going to see each other ever again. One last time. And she did something special for you, and that memory stood in your brain for two years. Um, <laughs> Square did him a hometown favor, gave him a great game for two years. Two years. And it's no coincidence that Cobril says 28 months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put it together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, in our book, one and one is two. But you know what? Let, let's bring Logan Meyer into the conversation. Logan, here's the situation. You know, we, we're, we're starting to see this pick up some serious traction. And there's a reason for it. Uh, Microsoft is one of the only big gaming companies that will overpay, will go out of their way to overpay. But I, I have another theory that's pretty interesting. You know, Jim Ryan, Jim Dan Shoes Ryan, <laughs> according to King, um, is in a very unique situation in the last couple of weeks. Uh, he has begun radio silent as a head of the, of, of the studios, um, as a head of PlayStation, uh, Herman Holst, we have not heard a peep from. Uh, we have we have seen, and again, I, I talked about this on Monday's Primetime Gaming. Um, I, I broke down um, a list of bad press, and I had 10 of them, and I could have added an additional 10. And right now, they've been taking it on the head, left, right, and center, because quite frankly, they just cannot compete with Microsoft. Now, granted, I'm not taking away from what they do in their first party. But, okay, you want to talk about what, ha what, what have they done in, in 2021? Well, not really much of nothing. Um, you know, their first parties still haven't arrived. Uh, I, they're coming, but they have not arrived. And Microsoft's been making big moves uh, to get uh, Game Pass in everyone's mouth, and it's working. But here's, here, here's my thought, Logan. Here's my thought uh, for, for the panel. And, of course, the uh, four, wow, 400 people here. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Thank you for coming out and joining. Oh, and P.S., by the way, real quick, uh, to give myself a pat on the ass, I crossed 8,000 subscribers yesterday right. on the march to 10,000. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. This has been a really crazy three years. Uh, um, I'll make four years on YouTube uh, on November 3rd, but I've only been doing live content for just about three years. So this is to have that many subs in that short of time is, is just incredible. So I want to thank everybody for doing that, you know, tuning in. And if you're, if you're new and you're not subscribed, please consider, uh, you're going to get good content each and every day, but Logan, I want to get back to my point. Um, right now, if, uh, talking about game pass on PlayStation, there's it doesn't seem like it would be a possibility or even feasible but here's my question to you with a move like square enix again folks hypothetically becoming a part of xbox game studio mike meaning microsoft owns it does that basically put playstation's feet to the fire forcing them to have Xbox Game Pass on their network because, quite frankly, at this point, be be between Bethesda and Square Enix being two of the biggest publishers now owned by Microsoft, how are they going to recover? Because they, Sony as a whole cannot buy this company. PlayStation is the only division making money for them. And this is why they made that deal with Netflix, which we're going to talk about next and what that means and why Netflix could potentially actually buy Sony whole, meaning PlayStation and all um, in a year or two. What, what are your thoughts on this? Does this? Is this a power move unlike anything we've ever seen in gaming? Yeah, um, 
uh, you've seen the memes from a few years ago when acquisitions started happening, but Phil's like Thanos. He's just gathering the stones for his gauntlet. <laughs> and he, he adds another studio in and he pops one in and just now he's moved on to ascend it to a higher plane of existence and is getting publishers now. And it's just um, it's wild. But yeah, I think the 28 months thing is very specific for a reason. Um, people who know things like that don't tweet randomly just throw out a month that's very specific for a reason mm -hmm. two years for exclusivity for project athea um it actually has a new name now i can't remember off the top of my head what it is mm -hmm. but um yeah and the whole yeah no we're not talking with anybody you know move along nothing to see here yeah that's cya they're not gonna say oh yeah we're talking to xbox <laughs> we're talking to tencent and we're talking to sony you know we just got back from a meeting with them we're getting coffee right now and then we'll head back to the boardroom they're not gonna say that i mean that would completely affect investors and everything. If you look at the stocks today, their um, their shares actually went up after this leak. So people like the idea. It drums up interest. That's why bankers would be interested in leaking something like this. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, so um, Square Enix denies it um, because you know, look at Obsidian when Xbox was acquiring them. They uh, they were they were funny about it brought up Fleetwood Mac's Rumors album and other stuff like that just to deflect it and, you know, move along. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what companies do. They they don't admit those things, you know, not saying it has happened, it's done, signed, sealed, delivered, whatever, but it that that's not a, a firm like, okay, you know, move along, there is nothing here. It's just what companies do. And it would be a huge acquisition. I mean, it... I would say for impact, it would actually be bigger than Bethesda, in my opinion, because of their sheer, you see all the Japanese titles and all these other niche genres and other things that Square does that Xbox historically has not had a wide access to. If they were to acquire that, not only would they be the home of RPGs with Bethesda and action games with Arcane and all this other stuff, but they'd have all these JRPGs, all these Japanese games. Um, they'd have Tomb Raider, uh, Deuce X, all this stuff. And you'd be right. Xbox would be the biggest third-party publisher for PlayStation if they were to bring it, um, bring Game Pass to PlayStation. And, I mean, Jim Ryan would seriously have to have a dilemma on his hands because would you really deny PlayStation owners two of the biggest publishers out there and you guys have gone used to, I mean, you'd be like calling their, um, what they're used to, like, you know, they're used to these games, the like final fantasy, all these, and then you just yank them and you deprive them. I, they're they're going to go crazy. They, I they gotta I have, their... they would do that. I, yeah, honestly, I, I, I don't, I, I, and not to jump in your segment part, but I don't think, um, Microsoft would do that to uh, the PlayStation owner. I honestly think when it comes to those deals, they would be the the only RPG place in town. But when it comes to certain deals, they will honor those deals. They they oh, won't, of course they would. Yeah, yeah they absolutely. Do them, you know, as 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 dirty as it may sound, the long prognosis. Of it is is dangerous for the the PlayStation platform, but I also get want to say that anything that happens that's happening right now, Jim Dance Moves Ryan is in compliance with this. He's com thoroughly complicit with everything that's happening. He's a businessman above all. PlayStation fan base may not like certain things. It's the fan base, but again, he answers to a higher power. And yeah. you guys, well, the stock, keep, it's the stock owners, right? <laughs> you guys keep thinking you run Sony. You don't, because no, if you nice. did, and you was purchasing games, they would never always be close to bankruptcy as much as they are. Sorry for jumping in your segment. <laughs> say, it, say it again for everybody in the back there, King. Right. Oh my man! <laughs> say, it, say it, no, say it again, no. I mean, I said. 
if they were actually purchasing games and supporting the mm-hmm. platform in the manner that they're supposed to support it, they wouldn't be facing bankruptcy at every turn. Right. I feel I feel that the PlayStation platform, the Sony platform, is always one step in the street and one step in the grave. Yeah. And it's it's you guys that keep doing this. You want AAA bangers, but you, when, you when other them. games come out, you, 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 you don't support them to the fullest. Yeah. And, and you always going to GameStop, getting it on a discount, doing it on the TCL uh, wave. (laughs) TCL wave, oh God, the slander. (laughs) You you dudes are like, it's just hard with you guys sometimes, really, honestly, and you have nobody to complain about with this but yourself. You know what kills me? Is when they compare them, so they compare Sony to Nintendo. They say uh, Sony, <laughs> like they go, Nintendo uh, is understands their fan base. That's why they're not changing. Blah blah. I'm sitting there going, uh, there's a big difference between the Nintendo fan base and PlayStation. And I could even admit this because I, I, I buy these games. I like a lot of these dudes. But what what the Nintendo animal cost himself? Uh, damn near thirty million. <laughs> right. And here's the thing. That's the issue. That's the thing. You see, Nintendo has this luxury that Sony will never have at this point, and that's they can tell their shareholders that this game will guarantee a certain sell. They yeah. can guarantee that, hey, bare minimum, keyword, minimum, 10 million. Yeah. yeah. PS5 mm-hmm. games, you know, Sony in general, they can't even guarantee a game will sell five. That Miles Morales hit wood. Yeah. That's true. That is true. You know, they found a way to get you $70 at you, you know, by giving you the remaster. But here's mm-hmm. the thing, though. Everybody, especially those who are well-informed, they knew what they were getting out of that game. That was just a starter to, you know, the big uh, yeah. sequel that we're going to get eventually. But yeah. that's all it was. It wasn't no big, you know, deal at all. You essentially just paid for the same game again, which was uh, the PS4 version. That was it for PS5. That's and, cool. you know, again... Dudes want to hype up these games, especially going to Days Gone. I'm sitting there going, y'all, y'all saying you're done over Days Gone. Here's the funny thing about Days Gone. All these dudes you might hear, you might see capping for it on Twitter mm-hmm. or in videos. When it, go, when it comes to the simple fact of supporting the game, when it comes to the simple fact of playing the game, they're all going to have something in common. A lot of these dudes are going to have either 0% or hell, maybe not even so much a fraction a percentage done in this game because they never purchased it to begin with. It's just yeah. how it is. It's how it is. And that's the sad part. I hate to say that, but a lot of these games, it speaks volumes. Do y'all know how, do y'all, y'all, y'all how many units Lost Legacy sold? No. Less than 2 million. That oh was my last, God. That was the last. Really? That was, that oh, was dude, I, I, I absolutely, lo- I, dude, I loved Lost Legacy. Here's dude. funny. Here's the kicker. Guess how much Uncharted 4 sold? How many? 15. And only wow, yeah, King. You see the divide here? Do you see the slope? 15 million sold for Uncharted 4. So, if 15 million sold, you expecting at least 10, uh, 10, at at least 10, if not half of the fan base to get it. But maybe it wasn't marketed properly, maybe it wasn't in a situation where they felt that you know. A Game Pass type of thing, or PlayStation Now. Or, I, I don't know. I don't use PlayStation Now, so yeah, nobody uses it. I, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, but I I'm I'm not well informed when it comes to the PlayStation ecosystem, and and I'm not going to talk from a, a position of ignorance. I will just lean on my man BitCloud to inform me exactly what's going on over there that you guys aren't subscribing because if you have 124 or 25 million, and I, I think you have more now, you have 150, oh, 160 yeah. million uh, PlayStation 4 sold. How come there's not at least 70 million people in PlayStation now or, or PlayStation Plus? What the hell is going they're, on? They're, 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 I, 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 full, I think they just crossed three, yeah, I just think, I think they just crossed 3 million in, in, in PlayStation now. Mm. Oh, boy. Mm. Which, 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 if you don't know the story, hey, and again, hey, we you no. have to you, you, again to Big Cloud's point, the PlayStation player base, the ones that are the most loudest, are the mm. ones that are not doing the justice by supporting. Because right. I bought Days Gone, the collector's edition. Uh, I have the statue of him sitting by his bike, literally on my shelf as we speak. Now I, I put I, I put thirty hours into the game. I I wind up falling off because it was just too long. 
I, and I fell out of love with what was going on. So, but I put thirty hours into well, the you, game. You played it. I mean, you, you're you have documented, you know, hours. You played. Well, my, well, my, is, my you, know? you can go yeah. look at my trophies and right, see exactly right. what I'm you doing on place. I, I don't hide nothing. Everyone can see what I'm doing. Yeah. But yeah. here's the thing: if you if you want to talk about the PlayStation again, representing and supporting their own brand in 2014. Now, understand this, folks. 2014 PlayStation Now launches. All right. We are in 2011. That's seven years. And in seven years, they have three million subscribers. So let's take a look at, at the other side of the fence and talk about who's supporting what and, 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 and who should be talking the most. Xbox Game Pass launched in the summer, specifically in June of 2017. We are now in 2021, which is four years later. I'm not a mathematician, folks. I don't plan. I don't. I don't uh, claim to be, but I at least could do adding and sub subtracting in this brain. Four years, twenty plus million subscribers and growing. There, there is there in, in itself lies the problem, and this is why this deal, which uh, Big Cloud, we're going to get to you in a second. I want to grab Crispy Bomb's opinion on this, is so important to talk about again. I, I saw the news, Benji Sales, good friend of the show, good friend of this community, going to definitely get a one-on-one -on -one with him to come on one of the shows hopefully soon. Um, he tweeted that their Square Enix uh, was uh, had some buyers, and Square Enix put out the press release that says nay. But, of course, we, <laughs> we debunked that because, again, it's just company jargon. Uh, Crispy Bomb, he, he, here's the situation. This is interesting on many levels, and you, uh, you, you know, people talk about business terror tactics, and Sony did that by charging their their players seventy dollars, and they just basically said, well, you no, know, in, in the words of the great Richard Pryor, tough titty, right? That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, you know, uh, and, and, you know, again, like, like for instance, Returnal, which looks good is going to be hurt by this, this arrogance, this stubbornness, because I'm not buying it and I buy everything. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wait for a sale because I'm not spending $70 on a game that I don't know about. And that has not been marketed enough for me to get excited about. So you look at this deal or this, uh, this rumored acquisition and you say to yourself, what is Microsoft looking to do the most outside of obviously make Game Pass like Netflix? They're looking to go into Japan and make Xbox relevant in a way that it has never been before. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, you sign Hideo Kojima to a three game deal, which of course we know is happening. Now, I know and King knows because someone told both of us that it's three games and not one. Right. That's something that we discussed last <laughs> yeah. week. It's three games, folks. It's not just one game. Now, of course, we're not going to divulge our source, but that's what we were told. And if they're wrong and if I'm wrong for saying so, then oh, you know what? I'll, 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 you know, I'll own it. But if you can add a Kojima who's making an Xbox exclusive, three of them, and then you turn around and in 28 months do what the Phil did the, uh, when, when he announced Bethesda, shock the world, literally turn the world on its axis, Crispy, and say that Square Enix has now become a part of Xbox Game Studio. What you do is the generation is over. It is done because what Microsoft is going to do is potentially force Sony's hand to put Xbox Game Pass on their, pla their, their, their network because they're going to have all of the JRPGs and all of the, uh, the Western JRPGs along with everything else. What, what are your thoughts on this? Is there something? Is there smoke where there's fire? Uh, uh, fire, where, you know, smoke where there's fire. Well, I, I don't think we are the type of people that make the same mistake twice because I actually remember it was it was on one uh, one of the shows I was on that we covered uh, that rumor of Bethesda way before it happened, and then it immediately got debunked and nobody mm -hmm. said another word about it. And you know they're just like, oh, you know, no way, we're not doing anything with the uh, Microsoft Air, no. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> All of a sudden, I, I'm just going to wait for something else to show up. Like, all of a sudden, the Sega thing comes back up. Because that's exactly what the WB thing did to Bethesda. They were like, oh, WB. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 okay. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. No, it doesn't. They, they're looking for a publisher. Yeah, King, yep. you're right. They're looking for a publisher. And that's the beauty of it. That's that's They're already, you know, got a huge foothold in Japan. That's where Phil wants to be. And not only that, you look at a game like Outriders. Okay, you look at that game. 
and that is really geared towards us and the, mm-hmm. in the, you know the western market because if you play the game and if you ever played gears it has a very similar feel and that's because people who could probably worked on gears at one point yep. some people don't even know that but so th- this is this is the whole point they can make games that can appeal to everyone, but they have their biggest foothold in Japan and they're a publisher. And of course they're going to say, no, no, it's not happening. And we don't know what you're talking about. And it's going to be funny. And, and you know, a year and a half, two years when all of a sudden you hear that banger and, and you want to be on that Bethesda level. Well, guess what? That's what square would do. Okay. Absolutely. They're, they have way too many IPs, way too many beloved IPs, and they're still pushing out, new experiences in gaming so my point is as you go and look at the way they've been acting on twitter as well you look at how they're you know they're updating everyone almost like an xbox or ubisoft has been doing Mm -hmm. for a while now now they're doing it now they could be playing copycat but i almost feel like there's there's a community manager or something you know uh, you know helping them or is is overseeing it for the outriders page so just the way they act I'm I'm just thinking there's something with that. Now I get it. They could have just you know paid for the development costs for Outriders or whatever deal they had with it, but I just don't feel like they would allow that influence like that unless there was something else there. And we'll see. But I I really I don't know. This is up on that Bethesda level, so it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, absolutely, and uh, great great points as always. You know, we were talking about this in the green room, and Crispy mm-hmm. actually said that. And, he says that yeah. uh, Square Enix is acting very Xbox X, if you will, and he's right. He's on to something. They're they're normally not as social as they've been. And what has Xbox been doing? They're being very social. You know, getting getting this game into Xbox Game Pass is a big deal. Now, th- now again, they, King and I get yeah, King. They okay. Everybody forgets when Square purchased or merged with Enix, right? Yes. And the reason why they merged with Enix because there were two uh, um, uh, that uh, Asian market uh, centric, uh, you know, uh, they were two that way. They needed to diversify to get the European uh, market in. So Tomb Raider and games of that ilk started coming. When they do a game like Avengers, uh, you're like, oh, okay, that's that's westernized. That's that's completely westernized. Um, and then you're like, okay, it didn't hit properly because I didn't think that it was in uh, a Game Pass type of situation. So when you have Outriders come out, and I know the guys, y'all were like, this was a surprise that this double uh, A title. And I don't, I don't like to give A's and stuff like that because I'm trying to move away from that because I'm so akin to what Game Pass is doing where your next greatest title can be somebody's garage project. Um, and, and a, a AAA title is what you deem it to be, right? Not yeah. what someone tells you it is. You know, nobody tells you, uh, you know, crab cakes is good. You find out on your own. And you If that's your best food, that's your best food. The hell with lobster. But anyway, um. I'm I'm seeing that they didn't resonate as much as they wanted to resonate with the Western market. Now, when you have Bethesda, and that is the Western RPG, you know, type of uh, situation going on there, and Microsoft has Obsidian, they pretty much cornered the Western market on RPGs. Yes. Now, when they seen the numbers come back from Outriders, and they went there with the metrics, and they and I'm pretty sure Microsoft put down the bag and said, uh, you know, this is what happened with uh, Avengers, and we can pretty much guarantee that this will be a, a railroad a, a success, a, a runaway success. And once they seen these numbers in front of them, they took a flyer. It, that gamble paid off. Who was ever sitting in that in that chair that said, "Yeah, let's go for it," and they, and they took the vote and and it went through. That gamble paid off because all four hundred people on my games list on my Xbox at some point in time has either tried it or played it or is playing it at this moment, and that level of interaction for that game 
spoke to the company. If we can get a look on an uh, on unknown IP uh, like this of this nature inside this ecosystem, what will happen with well known IPs yeah. that don't register how they want it to register? You know, I don't know the global sales numbers on certain Final Fantasies that were hit or miss, but. Don't you look at your Game Pass right now and notice there's a lot of Final Fantasy games that's there? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. these are test beds for the, these companies to see if we're able to succeed in this ecosystem. Yep. And I went and played old Final Fantasy games that I never thought would be there. You know, this thing is going to happen. The metrics speak too large, too loud. For them to ignore is a piece of the pie that every company wants. And if you purchase the publisher and you tell them that they're able to operate as they've been operating, it's just, you know, with our name on top of it. And, you know, we might go through and, you know, quality check stuff, this, that, and the third. But you will operate how you've been operating. And let's all go make some money now. Who doesn't want to hear that? I'm able to do how I've been doing. And, Let's go make some money now. Yeah, it's it's a it's a big deal. So, you know, I, I just want to add something before we get to BitCloud. That's interesting. I was looking up the metrics on the losses Square Enix took reportedly. And this is coming directly from the New York Times, folks. Mm. All right. So I, I pulled it from a source that you can't deny. They lost sixty three million dollars on that game. The game on PlayStation right now is $24. If you want what game? Avengers. Oh. That was that was no no brainer there. $24. Oh, no, no, I I I I I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it it's it's $24 right now if you want to go and buy that uh game yeah. uh that's uh that that obviously lost 63 million, but here here's something interesting panel and chat. Which by the way, we have over 500 people here, so please Thank, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, if you are enjoying the content like I think everyone is, please hit the like button and consider subscribing uh, to this channel. Uh, it is going to be uh, I got some big uh, again, if you if you missed if you missed out uh, this week, I was given I was allotted a very special opportunity. I sat down with the games director of the uh, Game Pass title launching on the 28th of April called Second Extinction. Mm -hmm. uh, that is basically uh, Turok Dinosaur Hunter meets Left 4 Dead. And I got a chance to sit down with Simon Vickers and uh, uh, a nice Palm, who is uh, part of the community development team. And I got 40 minutes with them, which was pretty impressive. Uh, they uh, The whole interview has the game running in the background, and it's, uh, it's going to be incredible. So a lot of those big uh, uh, um, interviews are coming. I, can't, I have two massive ones I can't talk about because we're still doing the metrics, but I can guarantee you they are the biggest of my career. Uh, and um, real quick, here's something. Here's, here's a little piece of a, a, a little nugget about interviews. Um, I got in touch today with the developer who just put out the game Lost Words. Uh, if you're not playing this game, uh, shame on you. It is a magical masterpiece of storytelling. I'm going to be sitting down with that developer uh, in the coming weeks, as well as the two secret ones that I can't talk about just yet. So. You want great podcasting. You want uh, honest opinions. You don't want fluff. You don't want a ban you know negative nonsense. And you want interviews. Tune in. You know, subscribe to Xbox. I mean, Xbox. Well, I'd, I'd, be loved, I'd, I'd love to be a part of Xbox. <laughs> subscribe to Double You'll Barrel Gaming. Yeah, yeah. Definitely appreciate that. But here's the thing, um, Big Cloud. I, I know that there are a lot of people <clears throat> in the community that are tired. Uh, especially on the on the PlayStation side of hearing about Xbox because it has been a lot of good news. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Sony is not in the same position, and it's 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 quite frustrating. And I'm a Sony fan. See, this is the difference. I don't come at this as just being a diehard Xbox yeah. guy, and I don't play anything else. I probably have more PlayStation games in my collection than these PlayStation dudes that are that that are capping for for the for the company. Like I buy everything PlayStation. Do you? I mean, how many people have a PlayStation Five? Two, you know, two controllers, the camera, the headset. I have all of that because I'm a fan. 
So when I when I say that I'm frustrated with Jim Ryan and I'm frustrated with Herman Holtz, who haven't said anything in the last two weeks, I'm coming from a place that's real for you. BitCloud, how much how much longer can Sony remain quiet about d- deals like this? And do you think that there is something to this Square Enix deal from well, a PlayStation for- fans point of view? Yeah, so I was talking to Marlon Gaming about this uh, while we were talking about, like, uh, you know, Sony's main issue right now is the fact that they're not transparent with their audience at all. Pretty much everybody on Xbox knows what they're getting, and they're at least excited for something that's coming. And they're continuing to build that hype. You know what I mean? Sony's just sitting in their own bubble and being super quiet. You can't be super quiet at times like this. You really can't. As far as the Square Enix deal and how this could happen, it's definitely possible, and I would definitely chalk it up to. <laughs> let's see how many how many game how many studios were talked about before. We had WB Montreal was mentioned before, Sega, Capcom, and now uh, these guys. So it's really up in the air. It's really, you know, I guess take your pick. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> time will tell type of thing. I'm not sure when we're going to get the announcement, but we'll definitely get it soon. But if it is happening, it's happening. Yeah. And to King's point, um, I think he said uh, Microsoft wouldn't, because I heard a little bit while I was on my way here, but um, <clears throat> I think he said Microsoft wouldn't um, pretty much gatekeep those games, so to speak. Like he would bring them no, to they would be No, they would be on, on PlayStation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, do, I do see that being the strat, because we, we've we been talking about this for the longest time, about Microsoft being a publisher, so, mm-hmm. or not, or a global third party publishing. publisher. Yeah, the global. There you go. That's the global that the publishing. You keep watching that word. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that right there again, it would speed up everything in their uh, favor if they actually want to do this. If they get Square Enix, Sony would be dumb not to put it on the service. It's that simple. Yeah, be dumb. I mean, Square Enix right now, though. Square Enix. <sighs> How do I say this about Square Enix? Square Enix is their own enemy as of late. Like mm-hmm. the Marvel game was not good, and now they're baking on Black Panther to save it. No, Black Panther's not going to save Avengers, just like Spider Man when he eventually. That's if the game survives long enough for Spider Man to show up. Yeah, uh, it show it's, up. it's not going to save that game at all. It never had any. It never was going to to make it at that point. That was the you know what's worse the worse to that point, BitCloud, which is mm-hmm. why I'm disappointed. It's not the Insomniac Spider Man that was rumored, which it's is not- a, it, no, it, which is it, which yeah. is a, which is ru- which is annoying because that's what I wanted to see, which would have meant that there was a crossover in the universes. No, it's their own Spider Man yeah. is going to look however they're going to look, and I that I, I immediately turn to, uh, you know you know, well, you know turn my head to that's the that's kind of Insomniac's vision though. If you think that, about yeah, it, that's, yeah, that's yeah. I you mean, get more of a comic book accurate versus well, uh, the new canon that they're you, doing. You're gonna get what they're trying like i saw people get turned off by tony stark now looking like the movie mcu yeah this is not an mcu game right. and i know you're talking about the insomniac game that's their ip that's their character that's mm. you know home Graham that's a whole them. different team yeah whole different I, vision but i'm i think that the the character will be accurate to um square enix world that they made right and i can see that yeah yeah the hulk for me, I'm I'm a little pissed off with it, but again, I take it as a different artist drawing in a comic book, you know. Um, and they're doing their renditions. You know, Jack Kirby's Incredible Hulk is not the same as Walter Simonson's Incredible Hulk. Correct. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's how I view. That's how I view it, and that's how I see it. I don't think uh, the Avengers will garner new purchases. Right. Yeah. I feel that anyone who has purchased it and has the season pass, they will uh, go back and play these uh, the game when these DLCs uh, do drop. I feel that the game is already set in in, in how it is, and I don't think they're going to put any more development costs into the said game. But I do feel that they're going to finish off the DLC, and I think those DLCs are already finished. They're just uh, doing the cadence and how they're going to release them. Yeah. But the the Black Panther won't be the savior, and Spider Man won't be the hero for it. But for those people that did purchase it, uh, you can hold solace in the fact that you will get a chance to play those characters. You will get a chance to uh, you know have them interact in the world that you already established, and you will get those storylines like they just did with the Kate Bishop and um, the Hawkeye uh, storylines that they did release that were pretty decent add-ons to the 
I thought that the main story for the Avengers was really good. A persistent world, it's not good at. That's the only thing. I like to yeah. like the main main campaign for that. Yeah, yeah I yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah, it was yeah. it was award winning for me. You yeah. know, as a comic book reader, I, I, I they hit all the bells and whistles. Square Enix can tell a great story. You they know, just they, try to put too much in it. That's the thing. Like they yeah. try to fit too much in it. You know, everybody's yeah. complaining about Chris Hemsworth not looking like the war, uh, but, Robert Tony not looking like Iron Man. It's but like, that's not yeah. them. That's like, not their no, game. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. Not. Listen, well, look. All I can say is this: the the Square Enix deal, whether it happens in the twenty eight months, I, I'm going to say this. Um, I trust in Bloomberg. I trust that this wasn't a, a, a fluff piece. Uh, to try the garner they 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 have Jason Schreier. He's been making them a ton of money because people are trying to read the stuff that he's printing about what's going on at Sony. Which, by the way, uh, BitCloud, you put something out there. He got bombed publicly, yeah, yeah. Uh, by um, a good friend of the show, uh, you know, creator of God of War, um, and what he said was not only politically correct, uh, and of course, I'm talking about if you don't know, uh, Corey Barlog. Um, uh, he has, and I, we, we've talked on Twitter. I mean, he's not really a friend or anything, but I, I we've talked because I've con- he's you know, a good guy. He's, he's really a good, open. he's a good, he's a yeah. good dude. He actually called uh Jason Trier what he is, and that's a bully. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was, it was good for him to call him out like that. But uh, Bloomberg doesn't report stuff that they don't believe that is going to be legitimate. But I, I, I do want to move on to the next chapter of this incredible show because it's going to be as big as this one was. But I have to catch up on the Super Chats. And quite frankly, I'm completely blown away once again. The generosity is just it's, – it's honestly not to be believed. Uh, the first one of the day comes to us from Sanadex. Who drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says, "If Xbox gets SE, throw your PlayStation Five in the bushes." Facts. <laughs> um, <laughs> Smitty Smith drops not one but two. Our brother bringing us back to church once again. He says, "Salute the panel and chat and congratulations on eight K subs." Boom, the book of X. Well, thank you, brother. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, second one says, "Right now, I'm playing MLB The Show, the Jackie Robinson edition on the Series X, and it feels so damn good." Who did? that for you the book of x um the head the head uh, theorem i think that's how you pronounce it he drops wow a very generous 20 dollars setup and says finally set up notifications so i can get to listen live i really appreciate all the research knowledge and and even hard a handed coverage that this channel provides i absolutely love it it's pronounced the head theorem well, thank you for the pronunciation, and more importantly, dude, thank you for uh, subscribing, and thank you for the very generous twenty dollars super chat. The good friend of the show, DeAndre Banks, drops a very generous two dollars super chat and says, "Phil dropping by <laughs> in his pit mobile with." <laughs> <laughs> with his shades on. <laughs> Davigan89 drops a $2 super chat and says, same, be- same behavior around Bethesda and the timed games. Yep. Yep, there you go. Jimbo Jangles drops a $5 super chat and says, Xbox went from getting shiny new cleats and equipment to being on Sports Center Top 10 Weekly. <laughs> Meanwhile, PlayStation <laughs> making the not Top 10 Weekly. <laughs> oh my god uh, J- joe dunmore good friend of the show joe welcome brother he drops a five dollars of jet and says i used to be a uh a- a- <laughs> i can't i used to be a tcl loser oh, no. but now i'm an ag an lgc x bot <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. You oh, got that no. variable refresh rate, oh, baby. You God. know what it is. Underground <laughs> Gamer drops a five dollar super chat. Thank you for your generosity, dude, and thanks for being here. Shout out to Sarah Bond, head of Game Pass. Yes, I love Sarah, man. I, I my one of my yep. bucket list goals is to interview her. I don't think I'm ever going to, but you know when you put it out to the universe, sometimes the universe answers back. It says, shout out to Sarah Bond, head of Xbox Game Pass, for being a straight assassin with these past Xbox game deals. Uh, what up, King? WBG podcast sends their regards. Well, welcome, brother. We definitely got to talk and maybe get you on the show with King David on What's a future episode. On? And our Grovel, wow, our Grovel 100 drops an incredible $50 super chat. Wow, dude. He says, Hey, boom, great show once again. Love all of your shows throughout the week with the great variety of guests, insights provided for us 
all to enjoy. P.S. Gamer tip. Great sales on the best gaming. OL, uh, the OLED TVs are going on now. Get mm-hmm. your LG CX. Yeah, I, I really, I just bought this TV two years ago, last December. Not this December, the following one. And I really kind of, I'm mad at myself that I didn't go with the LG CX because, <laughs> man, <laughs> man, that's a TV. But we also had a super chat come in from JC. Clara Moore drops a very generous $2 super chat and says, then we will have the Final Fantasy remake. Listen, I, I, I got a theory. Before we get on to the next topic, oh, BitCloud has dropped in um, a, a Xbox Game Pass Ultimate giveaway. Uh, congrats on 8K. Hit the like button. Thanks for that, dude. He dropped a, a code in the uh, in the chat if you want, if somebody wants to j- grab that. Uh, so be quick. I'm, I'm sure it's already. It's, already yeah, that was gone already. Yeah. Probably good. By, the, probably good. by the time he hit it, they were like, got <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I, you know, I lost my chain of thought. What I was going to say, what I was going to talk about. You know what? Let, let's let's move on to the next topic. Oh, gamer to by choice. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so thank you for that, King. I, I you know, because no sometimes I, I, I'm, you I know, I'm you. old, folks. I'm, I'm old. Here, I'm here. I'm here. I'm going to be 51. Let's do it. Um, what I think is going to happen because people are asking and i've been saying this i've been saying final fantasy 7 i i thought it was going to come the monday after i knew it wasn't but i I didn't say anything but, but here's the thing here's the thing here's my thought process and you know we one of the things i have always uh um um talked about with sony is their viciousness in their marketing yeah. And we have seen in the past that whenever Microsoft tried to get some headway, meaning some, you know, some, you know, some people to look at over their way, Sony would find a way to drop something to do something to turn other people's heads. Right. So th- th- mm-hmm. th- th- their marketing is just it- it's the best in the business. Well, it has been. It has not been recently. But what I think is going to happen with Final Fantasy seven, and, and I think it's going to come directly from Phil once again, is in June literally the day before or or the two days before or the week of the release of the final fantasy seven um playstation 5 upgrade and or the dlc phil spencer is going to announce that all of that is coming into xbox game pass and it's not going to cost you anything meaning that the ufi dlc that you're going to have to pay 20 bucks for on playstation is going to be free in xbox game pass i think that i think the playstation um is exclusive to the platform that dlc oh is it really i I think it is I, i think the wording said that um and that's i i could be absolutely wrong i think that game all right so guys Let's play the show, right? Let's get the show out after it hits Game Pass and after all the hoop raw and stuff die down. And you'd be like, whew, when the PlayStation deals, he'd be like, all right, that is not that bad. We're still alive. We still got a pulse. And that's when the news would drop Final Fantasy Game Pass. <laughs> when you take a deep breath, they're going to put your head back under the water. So <laughs> understand, it's coming. It's coming very soon. But um, yeah. Just as soon as uh the Game Pass game, you know the the baseball hits, you know uh Game Pass, then and and I, I want to give a shout out to the 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 uh, the guy that gave a super chat that's playing the Jackie Robinson edition now on Xbox. Yeah, that's Smitty Smith, good brother, good friend of uh, ILP. Right, and Smitty Smith paid his bucks. Yes, he did. You know, he could have waited for Game Pass like yours truly, um, but he's playing right now. And that just shows you just because you have Game Pass doesn't mean that you can stop buying games. He's probably a super lover of baseball and that you have the greatest baseball game on the platform of the, of your choice. Uh, he went out into support. So, you know, let's let's give a shout out to him and everybody else that's actually playing it right now. That's supporting. You know, that's that's a good thing to see. Yeah, no, that, 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 again, it's it, it's a big deal because uh, it's a baseball game that is renowned uh, around the the gaming world as the best in the business. Yeah, uh, it has been a major uh, PlayStation exclusive since its inception. It has it is it's so good that no one else dares makes a baseball. 
right? I mean, that that's how good it is yeah. because of what they bring, you know, they bring to this game each and every year. And the fact that it's on an Xbox right now is it, it's it's just it's it's like the cats are hanging out with dogs and and, and everyone's living together <laughs> in, 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 in dogs, harmony. Oh, it, 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 it's it's just not the it's just not to be believed. But real quick, two super chats came in. I want to grab before we really dive deep into the next um, topic. Uh, Gamer by choice, good friend of the show. He drops an outstanding ten dollars super chat and says, "Great show, boom, an amazing panel. I'm enjoying the knowledge you all drop. Great shows deserve great appreciation, and you all are all, all are appreciatable, dude. That is." Very Thank kind you, of you to say, dude. Thank you so much. And Lord Roughness, good friend of the show, <laughs> he drops an outstanding five dollars of gen says this year I've spent zero pounds and enjoyed the medium, dirt five, outriders, MLB the show next next week. Thanks, Phil Dominus, Maximus, Aurelia Spencer. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so folks, when here I'm we go. It's going to be fair by champions. Uh, Sony having a game pass, hmm, like we I, talked I, about I, before. Listen, I've been saying that for a while. It's something that I want in the biggest way, and I don't know if we're going to get it, but you nah, know, I, I just remember the outcry. Just, just remember that. I know King remembered. He probably put it in his calendar. But when yeah. dude is like, "Oh, how do how do Microsoft get it for free in Game Pass?" Blah blah. blah. We had to pay seventy. I'm going to go on. Uh, you guys were opposed to services. Remember? Yeah, you did. You don't uh, want services. You don't want services. You don't yeah, want an right? option. You don't, I, you don't I, want, I, want I, services. Yeah, you don't I, want an yeah. option to play it. I, 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 oh, I, no, I, this I, is going to disappear. You can't buy the games in the store anymore. Disappear, but, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, let, let, let's get into, and again, you guys saw the show notes. Usually, I am very long-winded in these show notes where King needs to really take a nap before he reads. <laughs> uh, I, I put a lot of work into it behind the scenes because I, I, I want to be correct i don't want to be that guy that's that that's that's dead ass set you know set on saying something and then i get it wrong because then i'm a boob and it's shame on me then i'm a i'm a poor producer well this was the shortest of the topics because it literally was three and a half sentences and this is this is one when you look at the thumbnail, people are going to, and I, I, I've got some real nasty messages. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. There's a particular guy in the chat that says that I'm not going to call him. I don't want to embarrass anyone. If you want to, if you want to be insulting, you're just going to get banned. Uh, he says that we're fools thinking that we understand Microsoft's financials. Well, I think we dropped enough oh, knowledge oh, to, to, uh, to 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 make the assessment. I mean, again, I don't know their books. I, I'm not. I'm. I, I. You know. I. I don't know numbers like that. But I think I can speak well enough about the situation that we all made great sense. But right. anyway, forget that knucklehead. Here's the. Here's the. Here, here's the situation. Right now, Jim Ryan is in a tailspin, and I'm not saying that he doesn't know what he's doing. This is the same guy that made Europe. PlayStation sold th six to one mm -hmm. versus Xbox. He made PlayStation so much money in Europe that they decided that he had the skills and the talent enough to make him the head of PlayStation. Now, of course, they did my boy Sean Layden wrong, and Sean <laughs> has been in the media recently liking some tweets. Oh, he, by the way, he liked um, every tweet in every he negative every tweet. tweet. Yeah, and I, and you know, something I love him for it because he was PlayStation, and for me, when he, he left. When yeah. he left, it just it did the heart. He was the I, I, I agree. Remember how he got on like every even when he first got on the stage, he was I loved him. him just building that confidence and going yes. on the stage. It was like he grew with us, you know what I mean? It was just well, he talked to the people. Yeah, you know, it was he good. got on stage, he pointed at people he knew. He yep. he's you know, he he riled, he was the rah-rah guy that Sony doesn't have anymore. Yeah. Well, getting back to Jim Ryan, people are saying how boom. Xbox Game Pass is never going to come to PlayStation. Okay, if you believe that, we'll see you in 28 months. Um, but <laughs> here is where we start to start wondering whether or not Horizon Zero Dawn comes on the Xbox Game Pass. And I know there's going to be people in this chat. We have 600 people here. They're going to be like, you know what, boom? Now I'm tuning out because you're not now 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 you're frauding. <laughs> Am I? Because King, I have to go to you first on this because while you were on Game On Daily, besides me nearly falling out of my chair in laughter, <laughs> the knowledge bombs that you were dropping were so on point that I called you up and told you, King, I'm <laughs> building Friday show around you can you be here and of course you gave me the thumbs up so here we go 
You talked about on Games on Daily, friends of this program, which again, there's someone else you should subscribe to. Gaz is just, my God. When he talks to, when he starts bringing these source videos, if you're not laughing, That's you're funny. dead. You're yeah. just, you're dead. Um, you talked about on this program with, uh, with Gaz and, 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 and his best friend, um, what, oh my God, why Lisa. am I? Asa, that's right, Asa. Who, Asa's the silent partner. Well, you know what it is? <laughs> yeah. they, are, they are perfect together because Asa is the guy that's just very straight and narrow. He doesn't really get excited. He's just, you know, he's very, I don't want to say block because that's insulting. I want to say no, he's very he's just straightforward. Even keeled. He's very even. Yes, he's very even keeled. That's a great point. Whereas Gaz, Gaz is <laughs> on, the, on, on the level of, he's a 10 every day of his life. And you, we right. love him for that. Love him. <laughs> Here's the thing. You talked about old games making new money. This is mm-hmm. something that's important to this conversation. And I want you to run away crazy with this because <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn, and I've said this before, this is nothing new. If you've, if you've been subscribed to me, you understand how I feel about Aloy. Mm-hmm. She is my favorite new Sony IP. I played through that game. I loved every minute of it. I took a thousand screenshots, a ton of video. I'm always talking about that franchise and the developer. I think that they, that what they did was special. King, how again, unlikely in a conversation, but when and when you start p- talking business, is there a chance we start to see some of these older PlayStation Four bangers make their way? to Xbox Game Pass because because of what could potentially happen with MLB The Show. And I say that because what happens, King, if MLB The Show has six or seven or Mm -hmm. 10 million downloads and then half of those are purchases and then on PlayStation, right, because it's $70, they only sell 1.9 million copies. What does that do to this conversation that we're having? Okay. You guys ain't going to like me right now. I'm going to say it right now. Melanin MLB High. This Show is going to sell more on the Xbox platform than its native platform. Period. Yeah, I agree. And you guys are like, there's no way, King. Absolutely not. You're crazy. <laughs> and I go to tell you, there's more eyes in Game Pass than there's eyes on the X- on the PlayStation itself. And you guys haven't been supporting the title. If you were supporting the title, MLB wouldn't have came out and said, listen, we got to go multi-plat. We got to make this bread. Like, you have this licensing. And, you know, guys made a point. Um, They, uh, no, it wasn't guys. It was uh, uh, Porsche Power. It was Ainsley, AZ Bowden. He made the point that MLB probably really didn't care if Sony made the game or not. They just want to make money off the licensing. And that's their job. Their job is to make sure that they make money off of stuff that they can monetize and they monetize their name, their likeness, you know. So this is where they make the most money at. So it only stands that they will also take the bag from Microsoft while making sure that they get uh, paid from Sony. That's what they're supposed to do. Now, if this game does the numbers that I think it does, because all it has to do is double or triple the numbers that it's been doing. And it's been doing like 1 million on the PlayStation platform, right? So now if it does 4 to 5 million, eyeballs open. Not only does uh, MLB's eyes open, Sony's eyes open. If you don't think Sony's getting paid from this, you're nuts. Oh, they're getting paid handsomely. Okay. Dude. They they uh, produced the game. Yes. Sony Studios. There was a reason why they became Sony Studios, and I laughed so mm-hmm. out loud that you guys was like, "It's something wrong with him." No, that allows them to uh, publish the game wherever. Right. And you guys are like, man, they can publish it on PC. That's for PC. It, it, it's not for X, but why? No, why? It's, for, it's for any future endeavor. They just give them their badge. Yeah, they're just giving them their badge on. Like, yeah, this is from our studio. That's it. All right. Jim Dance Moves Ryan and, and Sony came out and said they were per, uh, publishing games on your cell phone. Mm-hmm. On your cell phone. Here, your cell phone. They're already talking about it. you. Should reports about that? Yeah. 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 On your cool. cell phone. Yeah. Okay. So 
they're trying to get that big piece of the pie. Remember when Microsoft said they was publishing games on your cell phone and you was like, uh-huh. they're not going to get that 80 million, uh, <laughs> uh, eight, 8 billion people. They're not going to get out of here with cell phone. Well, who's going to play a game with a cell phone? What the cloud? I saw it. It was working. Boom saw it. I saw it working. Phenomenal. All right, so now Microsoft and, and Sony starting to marry each other, right? They're marrying each other. Okay, so Horizon Zero Dawn came out on the PC. I think the sales numbers already tailed off, right? It came out on the PlayStation. It sold whatever it sold, and it was released on the PC, and it sold whatever it's going to sell. The IP is not going to move any any further than where it's at unless you release it what on uh, your refrigerator or someplace else that you can actually play it and somebody can purchase it. Where would it make sense? Where would the most eyes, 25 million people get a chance to see this beautiful IP realized and played? Do you know how many people will purchase that game on Game Pass, will interact and play with that game, pause, on Game Pass? It's an older IP that has already ran its teeth inside the PlayStation world and has already did it on the PC. Where's the next logical step that you can take these older IPs to make this money? Sony is in the business of making money. If you think Game Pass doesn't make people money, look at Outriders. You're not understanding the end game here. These companies, Microsoft told you, Sony is not our competitor. You laughed at them. They're not. They said, actually, we like to help those guys out. We like to help them and Nintendo out. We have, you know, uh, network solutions and stuff like that we're working with. And then you laughed, and then they struck a deal with the Azure Cloud with Sony. And now yep. you wasn't laughing anymore. It's <clears throat> going to happen. This stuff is going to transpire. I see it happening with all the IPs and they're going to start releasing these on PC because they're going to get that PC box and then they're going to start releasing it in Game Pass and as a publishing studio, Sony st stands to make more money putting their titles on other platforms than just keeping it to one platform where you guys do not support the titles, period. You know, um, to back you up a little further on it, did you see um, Jim Ryan's quote? Wow. Oh, he said, um, this is what he said. We also looked at it through the lens of what the PlayStation community thought about it. There was no massive adverse reaction to it. So we will continue to take mission steps in this direction. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, uh, to the dudes who claim there's massive outrage, there's no massive outrage over what they're doing. It's just a select few people who want bragging rights for content. He, he that, don't that's tweet. It. He's not reading his Twitter feed then. Obviously, when people talk about they're going over the Xbox. Yeah, I'm going to I'm PC. Sure I'm, I'm going to Xbox or I'm just quitting gaming as a whole. Okay, get okay the hell bye. with you. You're not, you're not buying the games to begin with. And that's, exactly. the problem. That, that's seriously the problem. I said this on uh, Press Star yesterday. I had dudes there and say, well, no, those games <laughs> have select audiences. No, 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 no. You're they missing don't. the point. You're missing the point. With the amount of hype PlayStation games average, keyword, average. Yes. They should be doing much more than what you're seeing on, you know, on even on I, the... I have well, you, you know, yeah, you know what you have to do, uh, Big Cloud? And I, I'm so glad you brought this up because you're really, t you're really making a lot of sense. If you look at the metrics, yeah. I think the last actual count for PlayStations around the world is, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little high here, it's 120 million. I heard it was 114 to 117, but I'm going to say, mm -hmm. let, 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 for, you know, just for, for, for giggles, let's say it's 120 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's, that's incredible. No one is denying that that is not an impressive record. Right. You cannot argue that. That is incredible. That's and you know what? Like Hats that. off to them. But here is the problem. This is where changes must happen. Spider-Man, one of my favorite games. I've platinumed it, and I'm going to platinum it a second time, okay? I'm one trophy away from Miles Morales, which I thought was a masterpiece. Take a look at what a Marvel IP did 
as an exclusive. Now, I'm not denying that 20 plus million is impressive. It is unbelievably impressive. And most games never see that. But when you have to, when you take metrics into the conversation, and this is where the logic bombs come from. In my right hand is 120 million. In my left hand is 20 million copies sold. That means there are 100 million unsold copies of this game. Mm-hmm. That is the problem. Like, we again, people like to bring up Nintendo, right? They like to throw Nintendo into this. Nintendo doesn't have this problem. If Nintendo sold 10 million Switches, how many Nintendo games do you think they're going to sell? 10 million. Yeah, they, 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 they might yeah. sell more like they, they did with more. Zelda. Exactly. They buy their <laughs> consoles for those said what? Exclusives. When, yes. it comes to, when it comes to uh, P- uh, PlayStation and, Mic- oh, and Microsoft too, it's mostly for what? Third-party sales. It's always been this way. But the thing is, though, PlayStation dudes, and this is common. You see this everywhere on Twitter or YouTube, whatever. There are more people who act like hype men and act like, oh, I'm, you know, we're leading a revolution. We're about to buy these games in droves. You know, dudes want to tell you that seventy dollars bu- buying seventy dollar games is better than just having an option to experience it. Because first of all, what if the game is trash? What if it's boo boo? What if it's trash? <laughs> I'm out seventy dollars. <laughs> dudes don't think it's an option. They don't think about this type of stuff. Then they get, oh no no, y'all just want us to go like this. Ain't nobody wants you to be like nothing. It's all about options. Ain't no problem with an option. But the sad part is y'all not buying them to begin with. So it's like we're back here, you know? So instead of having an option where more people can actually experience it. How do you feel when you bought the Avengers and the game was Bobo? Listen, listen, listen. I'm not even going to bring up Avengers. I already know you have to go there this. I'm going to bring up something that was exclusive for PlayStation. Destruction All-Stars. Oh, man. Imagine paying $70 for Destruction All-Stars. Boo-boo. And capping for that. (laughs) Only for them to say, hey, guys, oh, yeah, you paid $70 for this? Oh, by the way, it's a PlayStation Plus. uh, (laughs) Oh, and by the way, after at least PlayStation Plus this month, it's going to be $20. Boo-boo. How you feel right now? How do you feel? Come on. It's it's common sense here. These dudes, they cap too much, man. They cap. I'm tired of it. Yeah, well, I mean, I listen. Be, I be days going. I'm like, bro, this is the most. Listen, this happened yesterday. Shout out to Jay Barry, but man, he, he had me weak. He showed uh, a certain stat. I'm not gonna say his name, but <laughs> he was like, "Yo, I played days gone. I went through the song, blah blah blah." blah. He showed the completion. Yo, King, guess guess what? Guess how much completion he had? One percent, zero. Oh well, there oh, you go. Well, there you go. There you go. That's the fraudulent. You I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't get a chance to even play the game. I mean, if anybody goes to my PlayStation list, I'll, you can see all the games that I have there and what I've played and what I finished and what I didn't. I've sold my PlayStation VR headset waiting for the next one to be announced and coming out. If it ever comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it is what it is right now with these dudes. Yeah, they, the difference between talking about it and actually being about it, that's just how it is. Like, <laughs> It's facts here. I'm, just, I'm done at that point. It's, I don't know what to say. Well, I mean, obviously, listen, folks, this is coming from someone that represents PlayStation in a proper manner. He has a show that's that, li- yeah, that goes live Friday evening at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday, and he keeps it real. He's on this show because he keeps it real. That He's my he's a, someone I consider a brother and someone I respect terribly. And if you're mad at what he's saying, then obviously I think the problem lies with you because what he's saying isn't, I'm not agreeing with it because it it better suits my show. I'm saying that what he's saying is actually happening. Guys, listen, listen, and boom can vouch for me. King David can vouch for me. Anybody on my PSN account can vouch for me. All these games that I have mentioned that we have just mentioned PlayStation exclusive. They're on my profile. And I guarantee you nine times out of 10, I have the platinum trophy for it. Oh, he you is a platinum welcome. master. You're welcome to check my receipts. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yeah. A lot of these dudes don't buy these games day one. That's another problem, too. They're like, yeah. oh, $70 is nothing. You guys want to, what did they say? You want to hold back innovation. That's the TCL no. dude. No. <laughs> Said, I'm going to get it on Black $70? Friday. <laughs> when, when, when you have $70 as the, the, as the lowest uh, point to get a game, right? <laughs> what happens when you have games go up in price, people? The magnifying glass gets what? Bigger. You yeah. look at it. What mm-hmm. are you getting for $70? Hence why Returnal 
It's in this. In this it's in this predicament now, is it's it? In the bushes. Returnals <laughs> in the biggest predicament. It's been in a long time. That's a new IP. Imagine the other new IPs. It's gonna like die. Quantum but doesn't it come out for Xbox later? What return? Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Sure. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. That that is by Housemark. Housemark, yeah, Housemark, yeah. yeah. Housemark notoriously makes games exclusively for PlayStation. Wait, what? But, okay, what was that game that they made? Rezo gun? gun? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that yeah, was Rezo a play. That, and that was a very good game. Listen, yeah. I I love that, was that, that developer. I'm a big fan of indie <laughs> devs. Uh, yeah. It's something that's in my wheelhouse. The problem, folks, is that a game like Returnal is going to be hurt by the 70s. I think about this for a second. For a game, and it's a new IP, and it looks really good. It does. It looks like what you would expect on a PlayStation game. But here is the problem. It has not been marketed well by Sony. Okay? You hardly know about the game. 7611 here in the States if you want that game. That what is, day does it come out? It's been delayed. Um, I think it's April. The end, I think it's April. the end of the month, it's I think. The which is okay. the 30th. And uh, what's the name is the, the 7th? Because they're like a like week before. What you said, Logan? I uh, said, so which game? You, uh, Returnal. Well, Returnal. Yeah, Returnal. That, yeah, that comes out the end of this month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually have pre-ordered the deluxe edition because I am excited for it because I'm. Well, a I mean, that's great. Dude. Sci-fi could... and horror junkie, so I I really like those types of games, and I'm I'm excited for it. But I do admit that the the price tag did make me a little. Yeah, I don't know, but I felt like. Um, you know, it's a new IP. They're trying something different. I'll go out there, go on a limb and support the devs and hope it turns out the way I hope it does. Well, you know, again, uh, it, hmm. it, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to I'm going to purchase it. I'm just going to wait because I am playing a lot of games. So to run out and spend 7611 is not something that's in my wheelhouse right now. I'll get it when it's 40 bucks or I'll cash in some GameStop points. You know, I have like 40,000 yeah. points. I'll get a $40 gift card and, and it becomes half price. Then for me, then, it, then it's worthy. I, I have. I, I do want to. I want to. I want to bring in uh, Logan in on the conversation. We're going to get crispy because uh, you know get your point on this. But I do have to thank a couple of people here. We have a new channel member, uh, Bar- Barmy Salami, drops a very uh, who's a, who's a now a channel. Hey, listen, funny as hell. Barmy, thank you so much for 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 joining us. More importantly, thank you for uh, you know the support, dude. That is awesome of you. Um, we also have a super chat that came in from DeAndre Banks, generous friend of the show. So he drops an outstanding two dollars of chat and says, "This is why Game Pass dominates ten or fifteen save money." Yeah, it's the truth. You you can you can go either way and, and still win. Um, we have um, Coniver. Uh, I think that's how you, spell, uh, you pronounce it, or you know Coniver. Um, he drops an outstanding five dollars of chat and says, "Phil Spender." Has definitely upped his game this generation. Keep up the good work, boom. Well, thanks, brother. Definitely appreciate that very much. And uh, Logan, I, I I gotta bring you in on the conversation because this is something that two, three, four years ago you'd have been laughed off the podcast if you would have come out and dare said PlayStation games possibly coming to an Xbox Game Pass platform service. They would have they would have uh, indicted you. Uh, or put you in the, in uh, you know in, in a straight jacket because you no one could have ever f- fathomed it but king and of course Ains and 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 the discussion that was on game on daily uh, last week was very impressive because it makes sense uh, my question to you is with sony as a company only making money through playstation and right now they are in a tailspin trying to figure out what their answer will be for uh xbox game pass could we actually see an a a, a, a you know a title that came out in 2017 make its way over to xbox game pass because i think king said ain said this old games make new money and I think that that in itself is a quote of quotes. What What are your thoughts on this? Um, I could I could potentially see some older titles coming to Game Pass as kind of a, a trial idea to see how it goes. But I, I'm I'm not sure how um, Jim Ryan is pretty adamant in how he does things about trying to hype up the PlayStation experience is only on PlayStation, this and this, but then of course they're, they're 
porting to PC now. So it does open the door. I'm I'm still personally not convinced that they would put them on a Game Pass, but I um I definitely am more open to it now than I would have a few months ago, like you said. I, I, I actually think it's it's not tinfoil hat anymore. It's a legitimate possibility. Well, I mean, again, this, uh, you, you have to you have to look at again the way I write these shows is besides doing the research, I like the metrics game because you can have an opinion, but you really can't challenge numbers. Mm-hmm. And the problem with a game like Horizon Zero Dawn is like something that BitCloud said: it sold well, but it should have sold twice as much because that's because mm-hmm. the PlayStation community did not get out there and support it. You know what Boom did? He bought the Collector's Edition again, sitting that statue of Aloy right next to Days Gone. I buy all that Collector's Edition. Why do you think? Uh, why do you think they're remaking Last of Us Uncharted reportedly? <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, those it's, games sold. Well, you know, he, 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 again, j- just to kind of just rewind that back for a second to talk about why there is something wrong at Sony. After the 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 very public uh, Jason Schreier article where they confirmed that um, Days Gone Two was shot down, right, and everyone that said that they played the game were complaining about it, but like. Big Cloud said some people had 0%, which they never played it or supported it, and they want this game because it's a PlayStation exclusive. How dare PlayStation say no? <laughs> this is how you know something is wrong at, uh, at SIE. Normally, their, their, their marketing department is on top of stuff like this. After that bad news, what happened yesterday? They announced Days Gone on PC. Mm-hmm. Now, now I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> if you are someone that just got the news that uh, two was shot down because they were unhappy with sales or they're unhappy with the reception of the public, are you going to go out and spend seventy dollars on a PC version of Days Gone? No, you're probably not going to. I think it's sixty. Oh, si- or sixty, bu- even sixty bucks at this Old point. Money, new money. Yeah, I, I again. So it, again, if. If you step back for a second, let, let, let's just step back for a second and put our, all our feelers, our feelings to the side. And let's talk metrics. This bad news story comes out. Now they're trying to sell you a game that didn't mm-hmm. sell well. Oh, now I played the game. I put 30 hours into it. Go check the go check the, the trophies. So all you got to do is go look at my, my, my PSN accounts. It's, it's Mr. Boomstick XL. Same as the name here. Just look for me and you can find what, exactly what I'm doing. Everything is open for everyone. OK, and now you turn around and say, OK, wait a second. This is not going to sell well here, but we have confirmation that Xbox Game Pass subscribers was just crossed 20 million and is going to be announced at 25 million at E3. At least that's my opinion. Allegedly, my opinion, um, you're going to potentially get more people to buy games in this service. If we are releasing Days Gone on that's not selling on PC and we have a chance to make new money with an old game, why not release Horizon Zero Dawn on um, on an Xbox platform? There's no reason not to. Crispy Bomb, let's get your opinion on this. This is this is a story. Again, this is this is one of those situations where we're trying to bring logic to the conversation. Some people are very upset about that. And if you are, well, then you can just hit the thumbs down button and get on out of here. Logic no one, hurts, man. They want to yeah, hear lo- logic does hear. hurt. Indeed, it does. <laughs> Is there any truth, even remotely, to this happening? Uh, remotely? Absolutely. I mean, you know, all these cappers, as, as uh, BitCloud likes to call them, they they sit there and they're screaming at the rooftop saying, no, you can't do this to us. But for the majority <laughs> of the people, they really don't care. You know what I mean? Like, ha- say, you it gotta again, remember, say it again. You know, they're just like, I'm going to play my Call of Duty. I have a PlayStation. I'm going to play it on PlayStation. That's all I care mm-hmm. about. Right. You know what I mean? So the thing that, you know, you look at what Jim Ryan has said, even recently, I'd say within this last six months, it's more leaning towards this. And this is because he keeps, you know, advocating the fact that they're making these huge, you know, high budget games. And if you're not supporting it on just that platform, you have to go elsewhere to continue to make the quality content that you have and are known for, but also, you know, make money back. Because at the end of the day, if you don't make money, you're you're not going to be making these games. Now, the one thing people forget 
that is, um, he said the game pass model doesn't work for them. I don't know how that's not possible. You just need to, to be able to take the original hit, which Xbox already did. And the one thing they did is they eliminated the big budget title, uh, if, if, if flopping essentially because it goes directly into game pass so mm -hmm. you funded it it eliminates it if you get another five million subscribers because you drop perfect dark in there that's a win they they it paid for it you know what i mean yes. that's the way they look at it because you're not looking at just that one game but then as they come out the pipeline you know, you get the avowed after the Hellblade too, and and you know people might be like, oh, I'm just gonna sub for this game and then I'm gonna leave, and then all of a sudden they see avowed and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, and then all of a sudden they got gotcha, you, they got gotcha. you, and then yeah. you drop third parties like uh, Outriders. Like I am loving that game, and Me I didn't too. pay a damn dime for it. Now, yes, it has its problems, but I still think they're trying to figure out how to keep these servers stable because. <laughs> you just they had such an influx i don't think they expected it no they you know didn't. can i add something to your conversation that i actually had in my brain to th uh, think about and of course being an old man i forgot uh, to your point crispy <laughs> to your point here is a here's a nugget that is not only shocking but it's telling to your point about outriders right now and i just checked it the number one selling game on xbox live so is again thank you king selling game on xbox live is outriders the it, number one selling game on a service that you can get it for free is number one leading the sales on xbox live what does that say to the overall mentality was phil right was phil lying when he said no no we have the metrics Xbox Game Pass buy, uh, players buy more games. Of yes. course. They're if comfortable. You, if you like a game, okay, like they don't, like they never said it's coming out or anything, but people can just be like, oh, you know what? I need to make sure that I have this game. I get it at, his, at a discount. I've mm -hmm. already tried it. You know, it's almost like a trial, but you could just continue playing it. But you're like, you know what? this is a cool game i'm gonna buy it and and <laughs> because because you know you, you didn't play for gears or you're not paying for mlb the show and all this other stuff that you, you you're like ah uh, you know i really don't care to buy that you know what i mean instead you're like oh that game let me buy it it's just like i i gave the example i would have never bought cyberpunk i mean shame on me because i shouldn't have bought it because i barely even played it um <laughs> but you know it's it's one of those things like you know it was there <clears throat> and at the time it was a good idea you know what I mean? But now that I, I, I you know, I dabble back into it. It came like, out? <laughs> oh no. Oh. I didn't even know that game came out. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wait for we're gonna wait for it to be in Game Pass, right, King? Then we're waiting for the patch and we're waiting for Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm waiting for the complete experience. Yeah, yeah. 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 Damn straight. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. Not even it ain't come out for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, it might, like I said, Microsoft and Xbox have eliminated the need to, you know, uh worry about if a game flops or not because it's almost generally generally not going to as long as they gain subscribers from it and that's yeah, their, their whole metric so yeah i had a guy logan wanted back in he's uh he got booted uh, yeah uh yeah logan hit him up oh let me let me get him on in here i was yeah. on another screen sorry about that logan let's get you back in here there you go i, I um i had a friend of okay, mine who, i'm uh, back sorry about that <laughs> no bro no problem Logan. I, I have a friend of mine who is a destiny nut and he goes, I don't play third person games. I don't play it. I say, you do me a favor. It's in Game Pass. Download the game. Try it out. You might like it. Just, just try it out. I'm at work, and um, I get a phone call. You know, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm getting ready to head to the gym, and he hits me up. He said, Yo, listen, when I get back from um, work today, uh, let's get on this outrides. <laughs> I said, well, what happened? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's growing on me. This guy has not played no Destiny in the past uh, week and a half that this Outriders has been out, and he has grinded to level cap uh, 30, and we play almost every day now. I just want to say, and, 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 I, and I come across people that didn't even get it through Game Pass, that didn't even know it was in Game Pass, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, we was playing with one dude. Yes, by the way, King, number yeah. six on Steam, not available in Xbox Game Pass. That came to us from a super chat from wow. your ver our good friends, P Pixel Bit G. Actually, uh, he says this after dropping a two dollar super chat. Outriders was also number six on what? on Steam. Oops, narrative dead. 
Yeah. It's it's the game is good. I mean, and I and I just said that to the fact that you know, um, just because I try before I buy, uh, I have already been indoctrinated to how the ecosystem works. So my thing now is um, I'm gonna try it before I purchase it, and after I, I play it or whatever, then you know if I like it enough, I, I'll purchase the game. It's 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 just that type of, of philosophy. That's all I was gonna say. That's about it. Well, listen, I, I do have one other topic that regards Sony, uh, and, and, and this oh, one you, is, again, this is a big you, one. You see What's Benji's, that? Uh, reports? About... Miles Morales, how it also both Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima Lifetime. Uh, uh, so that- no, I did not. Uh, you know what? I'm happy for Insomniac because that was a masterpiece <laughs> game. I love yeah. Miles. I love his family. I love everything about him. I thought it was a powerful story, and I appreciated it because... Uh, for for the simple things again, the game itself was great. But for me, growing up in a in a very Hispanic household, like people don't think they think, oh, it's a white guy. No, no, folks, I, I'm I'm Hispanic. Yeah. I just don't look it. Uh, my my <laughs> wella uh, had her house exactly the same way during Christmas time. The same exact food that they oh, were eating, wow. we yep. ate. So I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm not gonna get emotional now. She's no longer with us. But I put the controller down and wept, bro, like straight up cried because that was reminiscent of my Christmas when I grew up. It was everyone converged to Wella's house on Christmas Eve to have a big feast. And I'm telling you, like I'm talking about it right now and I got goosebumps. So that's why for me, I'm so happy for that game because of Miles, who he is, what he stands for. The culture. Yeah, everything, yeah. dude. Everything about that. So yeah, I mean again, a small piece of boom if you wanted to know. Um that's but I do I I, game, I, I uh, no no problem. Thank you for bringing it up. Uh, I, I Lord Roughness drops an additional uh, five dollars super chat and says so sony dudes weren't supporting the biggest titles at 60 dollars. how are they suddenly going to change and support them at 70 short answer they're not they're not uh, uh sharon sanders drops a very generous three dollars super chat and says hi all well welcome welcome to the program thank you for the super chat and of course i talked about pixel bit g and raiden blade generous friend of the show he drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says i have arrived lol in the voice of cog let's go yeah absolutely <laughs> my brother cognito but here is the next story and of course again i got this from the new york times folks yeah. just fyi this is where i get my sources from because i they're a trusted mm-hmm. source uh, and another uh, new reports are suggesting that after the multi-year deal that Sony Pictures just signed with Netflix, which is for five years for exclusive content for all of their pictures, not just their gaming movies, but their actual films after their theatrical release and their video on demand VOD uh, you know, contracts are up, right. Netflix is going to get them. Okay, so in a story pulled, again, from the New York Times, we have details on the deal. In another sign of Netflix growing dominance, Sony Pictures Entertainment has signed a five-year deal that will give the streaming giant the exclusive U.S. rights to Sony Films once they leave theaters and premium video on demand services the deal which begins with the studio's 2022 release releases builds on netflix existing partnership with sony pictures animation and replaces the agreement sony uh uh replaces the agreement sony one of the few major studios without its own streaming service uh, uh, that, 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 and this replaces the deal that they had with Stars Entertainment since 2005. Now, this is check this out. This means that the upcoming films like Morbius, which features Jared Leto playing Marvel's vampire, and Uncharted, starring mm-hmm. Tom Holland in an adaption of the PlayStation game, will become available on Netflix after they complete their theatrical and on demand runs. As part of the deal, Sony will make two to three direct-to-stream movies a year for Netflix moving forward, expanding Sony's slate and giving Netflix exclusive films 
for its service. As reported mm. by Comic Book Cast on YouTube, the host theory on Sony's potentially being purchased, Sony proper, meaning PlayStation, and if the numbers are right after this exclusive deal, because the partnership is very strong between uh, the two, a merger or outright acquisition is expected because of the reach of the Asian market and the power of PlayStation's brand, it seems to be a no-brainer for Netflix looking to grow in those regions. Now, mm -hmm. King, I got to <laughs> go to you first on this because there's a couple of big things here. As we know, and we've talked about this in BitCloud, you were a part of this whole Spider-Man conversation about a mm -hmm. year ago. If Sony does get purchased, Spider-Man's movie film rights immediately revert back to Marvel because they're non-transferable. Yep. And so FYI about the Spider-Man situation, but okay, Sony proper without PlayStation is considered in the red. With PlayStation, they're barely hovering above the black line. Is this a deal you can see coming and happening sooner than the five-year deal once the numbers start to come in. Okay. Because you talked about them you know, shaving off some things to make them look nice and pretty. I told people that before. You, you said that, yes. People, they, Jim Dance Moves Ryan is brought in to clean up the show. All right? Uh, Y'all love Sean Layden. I love Sean Layden. All right? But he's a little bit of a messy eater. And he, he, he gives a lot of people a chance. He's like one of those old home restaurants that you go in and, you know, yeah, Tom, I know you're short on the bill today. Don't worry about it. Five dollars short. Yeah, <laughs> it's OK, buddy. It's OK. It's OK, <laughs> man. You know, and then the books is short. You understand? Books can't be short. Sean, man, you know, we're in the red blood. So we got to let you go. We got to bring in somebody to clean up these books and run a tight ship. Jim Dance moves. Ryan come in, start trimming the fat. One of the facts was the studio in Japan. It wasn't producing. But under Sean, Sean knew the potential. Sean remembered the old days. Sean told him, you can always eat here. That would have never happened under Sean. Never. But again, Jim is here to clean stuff up, pretty stuff up consolidate things. Remember when they was consolidating everything in Europe, bringing everything in closer? Come in. I want all your close to me. No more mm -hmm. Sean Lanes in each particular district. Just one rule. Come here. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to answer to this guy here. He's mm -hmm. in charge. Okay? Everybody come in close. We got to keep it tight. <laughs> You're getting picked off around the edges. <laughs> got to keep it tight. All right? It's all about a team. All right. So... Now Sony's being prettied up, and I told you I like they look like they're being prettied up to be purchased. And, they, and I said it on boom. Nah, what are you? You crazy, King? They called you crazy, King. They P.S. By me. the way, I was there. Absolutely not. See, he doesn't know what they do. Sony's making money hand over fist, not from you because you don't buy games. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> you went for the juggler. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go for the juggler. Uh, <laughs> all right, so. If the PlayStation brand is really only propping up the, the, the company, and right now, there's a semiconductor shortage, guys. If you don't understand that, yes. what's happening a, around the world is... It's a big, big problem. Yeah. It's it's hurting everyone. Now, yeah. I know as a gamer... Apple, everybody. It hurts everyone. Ev yeah. Everybody. It hurts uh, major uh, automotive companies mm -hmm. down to us, Right. Okay, so the prices of these consoles can be produced in the manner that you want them to be produced. And normally, Microsoft and Sony will be humming along and systems will be out to be sold. Okay, that's not happening. But what y'all are not seeing here, another major component to Sony's revenue stream is the movies. Yep. Indeed. COVID destroyed it. So financially, if you're waiting for PlayStation to hold you up with semiconductors and, and shortages and this COVID stuff is messing up our money over here and we're not making money over here, oh, what the hell are we going to do? Can't even guarantee a PS5 in the home without a scalper. That's the Exactly. Thing. So yeah. remember when Sony pulled the 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 on-demand stuff? The, 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 there was a well, view or something? Yeah. yeah I remember that, yeah. It was view, yeah. That? 
Mm-hmm. Remember that? And y'all was like, I was like, yo, that don't look right. That don't smell good. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, something's afoot. King, you're bugging. King, you don't know what you're talking about. Ah, boom, Netflix deal. Yep. Yeah. Netflix is having a lot of that's heat. a big that's a big bag of money from Netflix as as an injection well, of that's, cash. That's huge. So Netflix is trying like because the way things are projected with Disney, Disney's about to pass. This is Netflix. this is okay. So yeah. this is yeah. this is this is let, let's, let, let's get to let's get yeah. to the rub. Let's <laughs> yeah. get to it right now, right? Okay, so they were having a huge amount of heat from Disney, and, and Disney wasn't actually moving. Uh, how they were supposed to. The Mandalorian came out and it was they, the shows wasn't there yet. They were still producing the shows and then COVID hit and it kind of slowed Disney down. They opened the door a little bit for HBO Max. Now, HBO Max, because of the COVID situation, day and day, I just saw Godzilla. I didn't even have to leave my house. Yeah. I just saw, I purchased, I told people when I was going to purchase, soon as Wonder Woman became available, day and date, I was in like yeah. Flint and I'm not leaving. Because they're signing another deal with another company. I got Mortal Kombat coming next week. Not leaving. Yeah, pretty much. It made your life that much easier. <laughs> I'm not going home. I'm not going yeah. anywhere. I mean, Nobody's I'm going movie. to the movie theater, bro. They're right signing I, I would. That's for yeah, sure. I'm not going to the theater. <laughs> so, right now, Netflix is under siege from HBO, mm-hmm. from Disney. Right? And Disney's starting to ramp it up. Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm watching it after this. Now, Sony's in a position where they're under siege. Yep. How can we make this better? All right. So Netflix needs content. Sony makes movies. Mm -hmm. Sony makes movies without having direct input needed. Right? So you buy a company that's already up and running, that's already doing a thing. You give them a cash influx. They help you out. You help them out. Y'all help each other out. Let's see how this works for the next couple of years. Now, this is where it gets really crazy. At this point in time, Sony pretty they self up to be purchased, put on the lipstick, got the hair done, the nails done, the toes is right. They're ready for the purchase. Now, they have a streaming system where you can stream all the movies through there. Could you imagine all Sony back catalog of movies now being available on Netflix? Mm -hmm. What would that do for Netflix? But that will also get them in the Eastern markets that they want to be in. Because I just told you, in the American market, Netflix is in 89% of homes. But it's not the same over there. We think we're the only show. No, no, no. They have other stuff there. But they need to make that penetration there. And with that Sony cachet, that brand, they can actually acquire this. Now, this is where the game and stuff comes in. If they purchase Sony, they purchase Sony in its entirety. That's from camcorders, TVs, movies, and consoles. And I know you're like, why would Netflix do that? It doesn't make any sense. At the same time, Netflix is battling other companies as well. Not only that, they have easy um, access to entertainment boxes, which would be the systems. That's right right there. Yep, it's right there. So, again, guys, I know it seems a little bit far-fetched that Netflix and Sony will ever get to that point. But again, I told you when they was pulling that content off of their stores, they pulled it off for a reason. So now their stuff is in Netflix. And it's going to be for the next two years. Remember the two years, guys. Uh, Remember the, a, yeah, the, the, it's coming is. right back, right? Mm-hmm. Listen, a lot of things is happening. It's <laughs> happening in the state that I know you guys are like, man, yo, he's this conspiracy, this tin hat dude. I have never <laughs> been wrong yet. I've been right all the time. It's it's not doom and gloom. It's think, it's facts, King. It's numbers. I, but I you think can't Netflix argue with the numbers. Them. Yes, it does help them. them. I mean, you know, you know what? Need, in the, they in need the, a system so because they lost all the not so they need like a real like hot, you know what I mean? Like something real, real good on it. Like they need a Spider-Man. 
to really yeah you know what's what's interesting big cloud in the report it says mm-hmm. uh if you if you if you go to comic book uh, and i and i like uh arna arnie's uh he, he's he's legit they, 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 they that's a legit uh site i mean it's it's it, i it's one of the ones i i mean as a youtuber that i listen to them almost all the time yeah um and uh, what Arnie said is that uh, Netflix looking at the Sony picture deal, it's much more than that because they get a game console mm-hmm. with millions of, of, of players and it's a recognizable brand. That's, that is one of the major factors in the conversation. Sure, Sony has the IPs. They have plenty of incredible films, but they have PlayStation. And that's why this could actually be a reality. The yeah. Last of Us movie. Oh, now, y'all don't, yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all don't understand why they're making them Last of Us again. Like, why would they do that, King? That's stupid. They should be making. They a- have a show coming out on HBO. Got a show it's coming the- up. Plus, they know that's going to sell. You know? It's going gonna, it's gonna to sell. It's going to sell. This is they changed the faces of the actors and the actresses mm-hmm. in, in 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 the game to mirror the the the, the show, the movie. Pedro and, Pascal will be faced in the new uh, remake. Uh, FYI, yeah. people are going to be pissed, but they're going to change the Nobody's. actresses and actors to to mimic what is on film. Who's because pissed? was that? Who's pissed? Who's pissed? Who's pissed? Oh no, off? I'm not pissed. I'm not pissed. Like <laughs> anybody's as pissed off. Then go buy the copy now, right? Go to go to the store and go buy the copy now for the cheap right now and go play with the same face that you like. When they changed the Spider-Man face on me, you know what I did? I voted with my bucks and I said, I don't like that Spider-Man face. I'm not doing it. But they changed it and they don't care because, listen, if you if you want that old face, they got it. It's in the yeah, store. Yeah, they got the option. Go get there. it. Yeah. The Don't one with Yuri, the the one with Yuri in the remake did feel out of place. It, it really did in some of the scenes. I mean, it, it looks good, like it looks next level, but it's it's really out of place. It, it is, but yeah. it's even in Miles, it was a little like, eh. yeah, it's, a little weird for sure. Yeah, especially because I was used to the other face. But that's right, that one was a perfect look. I was like, damn, he looks. You know, what I mean, that was a perfect Peter Parker representation. And this one is like, well, I get what y'all went for. Y'all went with ultra realism with ray tracing. Okay, fine, but. Uh, it looks a little weird. It looks. It weird. does look weird. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Hopefully, it comes across a lot better in the sequel. That's what I'm hoping on. Well, I think it will because it's being built from the ground up. It's, yeah. It's not a remaster of the original. Right. It's a remake, and hopefully, it'll be on the lines more, of Resident Evil Two. I agree. Yeah, it'll be more in place because you know the game will be up upgraded around it. If that makes sense. Like it'll yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, you know what? Let, let's bring in Logan on this conversation. Logan, you you're a man who appreciates numbers. Okay. You're reporting uh, when you when when you're writing for LordsOfGaming.net. Shameless plug. Um, you uh, usually uh, take these numbers and they're a big part of your pieces. Uh, this is a uh, this is an important story. This is something that's relevant. It's something that has gripped the uh, the film world. Do you see Netflix with its influx of cash and subscribers actually buying Sony potentially in the next couple of years? I a hundred percent think that's a legitimate possibility. And I it as King and others have mentioned, there's so many reasons why they would do that it would get them the asian market they've been yep. adding anime series and get more gaming ips like castlevania other things tomb raider have been getting series on netflix they clearly see the value of gaming ips why not buy a preeminent gaming company that also comes with all these other movie ips so that you get movies you get shows you get games and then your playstation 5 6 whatever going forward will also be a netflix box i mean yes so you have Mm -hmm. people are cutting cable costs and everything and not everybody has TVs that have the apps and installable and whatnot, or so you can have, you know, you got your games and your Netflix, your Netflix machine right here in your homes everywhere. And it competes with HBO max is going for the jugular right now, a day and mm-hmm. date on these launches. Oh, yeah. um, it's just incredible. Like I watched Godzilla the other day. I'm going to watch a Snyder cut. I mean, you got mortal Kombat coming. It's Can't incredible. Wait. Disney plus my goodness, the Falcon 
Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, WandaVision, Mandalorian, yep. all these classic cartoons from my childhood are on there. All the what, what about stuff the new animated on. series uh, with the clones coming out? Yeah, uh, Bad Batch. Oh yeah, looks Bad Batch. Fucking awesome. I know. How was Watch Winter Soldier on anyways? Star That'd Wars good. Day. Yeah, yes, that's Watch right. Uh, May the fourth, it's coming out. It's a it's a seventy minute yeah. episode. Yep. Mm-hmm. Was um Falcon and Winter Soldier? So, uh, is, has it has it kicked up yet? Is it good? Has it got really good? Yeah, it's almost finished. It's got two it's episodes awesome. left. It's almost yeah. one, one episode. Yeah. One episode? No. Yeah. Wow. Well, next week the is the day? last one. Yeah. 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 Last, yeah. Next week is the last one. It's it's this the best series they had so far as far as they Marvel stuff go. It be one division. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. dude! Yeah. Really? Oh, right, well, okay. It's, it's doing it's it's okay. doing gang busting numbers for 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 uh, Disney Plus. Well, because it's a dude bro show. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, it's live exposure. Yeah. No, it's no. It, I mean, no, seriously. Like <laughs> it is. Like, yeah, yeah, it's buddy yeah, like, comedy. Is it's what it is. Really funny. So like Hobbs and Shaw type of yeah. level. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, I guess. Yep. You. Yeah. So uh, continue, Logan. <laughs> Logan, sorry. <laughs> uh, like I mean, to his to his overarching point, you know, everybody's moving at this point. But go ahead, Logan, finish it up. Logan, are you there, brother? Logan, maybe it, yeah, maybe he's out again. We'll, yeah, we'll bring we'll bring him back in, Crispy. Let's get you in on the conversation because obviously, uh, for many many years, you've been a proponent for a streaming service like Game Pass, uh, and we see that streaming services, because of the world being the world. Uh, we're going to get more stay-at-home people. I would never go back to a theater. And, and, and I was one of those midnight guys. Like, I would go with, you know, 10, 15, 20 of my friends to dinner, and we go check out every film. I went with my brother, Neo Mental, almost every Marvel film. We would go to IHOP. We'd sit there for an hour, stuff our faces, and go to the first showing in the IMAX uh, and watch a film. But to be honest with you, with, with everything going on, I don't I don't feel comfortable going to the, uh, the box office anymore anymore i'd rather stay at home and watch it with mrs boom you know what i'm saying so with all of that said and you seeing the moves that all of these streaming services are making do you see netflix actually buying sony pictures which of course would include uh playstation proper well um if you're gonna lose a spider-man ip i don't see how that would be logical i feel like it would be a merger and I bet you there's a way where it would it would be able to keep the Spider-Man IP. That's a billion dollar IP. They yes. can't keep it. I think even a merger I, it, it, it violates the contract. The, yeah. the IP can't. The, 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 they can't, there's there's no sharing or selling of the IP. If they merge or they buy or they're sold, it immediately gets reverted back to Marvel. That that's the contract. So that would be a tough thing for both companies to swallow. To be honest, yeah, but it's still yeah. it's still getting PlayStation though. You know what I'm saying? I mean that well, that and, and, and that's I mean, where the you're the getting logic. PlayStation, but you're missing a massive counter to what Marvel's building with the mcu and their tv shows you missed and, and disney disney plus and so yeah, yeah. That, the only other thing i could see thing, yeah. oh you yeah. know is is pay, overpaying for the ip and and trying yeah. to keep it from disney but I, I don't think disney gonna play ball with that they want the ip that's what they want so yeah. i agree too yeah. yeah no it's, it's just in the language of the contract you know um when marvel uh, sold them the rights to it. If they were ever to, you know, be acquired, uh, uh, anything, they it would automatically revert back to Marvel. But yeah. they did something a little bit more ingenious than anything. Sony is very, very, very smart. They did something very ingenious with the Spider-Man IP. They made a world with Venom, mm -hmm. with Morbius. And other of his rogue galleries that I don't think that is in that whole language as Spider Man is. I think right. Spider Man will revert, but these other characters that they have, like Craven the Hunter, the Vulture, and stuff like that, they can do movies of these characters that I believe so far, until I'm, you know, until somebody can show me something different. Venom is still uh, a Sony brand. It's in yeah, Sony, in about Sony, to get Carnage yeah. uh, next to what the yeah. So table. they can still uh, move without that uh, Spider-Man IP. I, I know it looks weird, but we got a Venom movie without Spider-Man, and nobody thought it would be a success, but it was. Yeah, yeah. mesh. Yeah, but um, 
my, my thing is is that you know because PlayStation really hasn't done anything with like their their PlayStation Now service and you know I mean basically that's why I keep saying it's convoluted it's like oh which is more important plus or now or now or plus like it's like you, you almost just haven't even done anything with now and you're doing more on plus yeah right. so like and they won't do day and day and they know that would be a huge success for them in my opinion it would really like you double your subscriptions immediately i think it's happening crispy but it's going to happen like a little later like they're going to merge it uh but, but then i look film. at i look at netflix and i say you know you all a lot of people don't remember that blockbuster could have bought netflix so yep. this was this this that would have literally saved Blockbuster. Instead, Blockbuster tried to make Blockbuster all access. I believe that's what it was called back then. And it, it was basically trying to do the same like um renting through the mail and stuff, and they were very unsuccessful at it. And Netflix was already far ahead on what to do there, and then eventually the streaming came. The thing is, is I could see Netflix trying to play ball against and against both movies, TV, and also games against Game Pass. And if if they did buy Sony, they would, that would be the reason, because they would they would offer all three on their service. Yep. And and that's where you would you'd say, okay, you're still going to get your PlayStation console, everything else. We want to we want another platform besides just the TV and everything else to provide these services. Now, would it be just streaming? Probably not, because like I said, they would keep the the PlayStation brand intact. But I also believe that, you know, that's why PlayStation Studios is branded the way it is now. And, it, you know, you can have like you can say, oh, you know what, Xbox, you want to get on this? Go ahead. You know, what I mean, they, they Sony is setting themselves up to do exactly what Microsoft's already been doing. And I'll tell you right now, if if they release games, you know, on, on Xbox Game Pass or even Xbox themselves at some point. I truly believe the wall is going to break down and Microsoft will be like, you know what? We'll release games on yours, too. And as soon as Sony agrees to somewhat of that, you might see like a Halo Master Chief collection come there at some point. Something, you know, all these older games that, you know, maybe a PlayStation person has been dead on PlayStation his whole life, never touched a Halo. Mm -hmm. I've seen that on I've seen that on Twitch, YouTube, people just first time ever playing Halo or Gears and being like, wow, I was such a dick for like being like, mm -hmm. you know, ridiculous to people like, oh, how could you like this game? This game's mm -hmm. trash and I never even played it and now I feel like an ass. And I've had many people that I've, you know, I, I continue to watch on Twitch and stuff that, you know, have kind of gravitated towards realizing that, you know, our, our points are just as good or as valid as yours. So Netflix is, is trying to build a brand, trying to keep up pace with, with Disney Sony really has both ends of the spectrum as far as streaming, mm -hmm. and that's what Netflix is good at. So, mm. you know, I, I that's the, my only concern is is that Spider Man IP losing that. I mean, that is the only crux to the to the thing that that's I just say card, I don't yeah. know. You know what I mean? I don't know, but it makes total sense for them to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Big Cloud, let's get uh, before we get everyone out of here and I read the rest of the super chats. Let's get your opinion on this. This is this is something that again, this is complete speculation, oh, yeah. but a lot of points that everyone has made including the uh, channel that I pulled it from and many reports within the gaming community seem to be all coming up, you know, at this at the same conclusion that this may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen 24 months from now, but it's something that could it's potentially happen. It's on the table, happen. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely on the table. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm with Crispy. Like, Spider-Man is like their ace card. It's kind of yes, it always is. been their character to go to when they really want to push something, you know? Uh, they have everything they gain from this deal, too. That's the other thing. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really up in the air how I really feel about it. Me, personally, I don't think they would risk losing Spider-Man. Even if they have their own little MCU they've uh, built with, you know, Carnage, with Craven the Hunter, with Morbius, et cetera, et cetera, they, that's not, you know what I mean? That's not enough. That's not going to have the impact, I don't think. Not even Venom. I don't think Venom by himself would even help them in the same league as Spider-Man. No, Sp Spider-Man is iconic, dude. He, yeah, he is would. Marvel, for crying out loud. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much, they pretty much did, you know, with, with the new games, they've done a lot of stuff that a lot of us didn't think was going to become canon like who would have thought that new suit that new yeah, advanced which suit would become canon dope, you know it's one of the dope the suits yeah mm -hmm. that, that has become canon in, in the mcu now like that's you know it's i don't know <laughs> it's a, such a such a stretch but 
I'll say you know we'll see. We'll we'll wait. We'll wait and see. Yeah, point. and that's that's a great way to close out the topic. We it, right now it is a wait and see, but I thought it was worthy of a conversation, that and everyone and everyone brought it brought it as always. Let me just catch up with some of your super chats, and we'll get the everyone out of here. Um, Raiden Blade drops an additional. Two dollars super chat says, "Did I miss the show? Well, I'll have to catch it from the beginning." Um, and he drops another one. Says, "My question from yesterday: Will Netflix buy Sony?" And obviously, you heard what we had to say. I think it's a possibility. It's not tomorrow, um, but it could be certainly soon. And he drops an additional two dollars super chat. Thank you for the generosity, Raiden Blade. He says, "Jim is currently trimming the fat." Something that King said. I think. Uh, uh, um, BitCloud also might have mentioned that. Let me just find the other Super Chats because there's been quite a few of them. Oh, I might have missed some. Okay, well, Brap, Basement Ar- 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 Radio Arcade Podcast. Enrique, very good friend of the show. He drops an outstanding $2 Super Chat and says, Hi, hey, boom and panel, salute. Well, thank you, brother, for being here. Thank you for the generosity. Reggie Mobile 9 drops a very generous $10 Super Chat and says, Great show as always, boom. Shout out to the dope. Um, a panel, um, enjoy the weekend, fam. Well, thank you so much for being here, Reggie, and thank you for the generosity. We also had a couple of Super Chats come in, but I have to go into YouTube to find them because I can't see them in my screen. So, King, we'll do your outro first, and I'll go look for those. Um, You got one? Did you get Reggie? Yeah, Reggie Mobile 9 I got, yes. Okay. Uh, You just got another one, then. Yeah, Ra- Raiden Blade drops a very, wow, an additional $10 Super Chat and says, uh, says remember these are characters from the Spider Universe. Uh, removes removes Spider-Man and, and he never appears in any of the movies. Remember, Sony is trying to create a Marvel-like universe around him talking about Spider-Man. That's, that's a great point. But King, let's let's get you on out here, brother. Uh, you have a lot going on. Obviously, besides LordsofGaming.net that Logan writes for. Besides king of statue you also have the iron lords podcast which by the way a big congratulations to you guys the numbers have been through the roof and it's well deserved you guys have had some powerful guests on and of course i think that that hit parade continues this week why don't you tell everyone about where they could reach out to you on social media but more importantly help support your brothers at the Iron Lord Podcast. Well, you can find me at uh, King David OTW on Twitter. You can find me with the same uh, King David OTW on Xbox Live. On my PlayStation, PSN, is uh, Xbox 360 Lover 01, wherever I decide to <laughs> activate it again. <laughs> it's, it's whatever. But you can catch me tonight on Dolph Castle X. That's DCX Open Mic at 9 p.m. tonight, where we uh, you see all these lovely statues. Well, uh, uh, my whole team is going to be there. Uh, we talk statues. We talk entertainment. We're going to be talking Falcon and the Winter Soldier without any spoilers. Uh, we talk uh, movies. We talk comic books. We talk anything entertainment. And, you know, uh, we also talk some video games here and there, very sparse. <laughs> Excuse me. But it's uh, more about statues. Yep. Upcoming statues, custom statues, and stuff like that. Sunday, IOP, 1 p.m., you do not want to miss this guess. It's a big Trust one. Trust me. Yeah. You do not want to miss this guess. It might compel you. You might have a compulsion to just be there. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Well, listen. Uh, yeah, if you if you're if you're not subscribed to Iron Lords podcast, sh- shame on you. What what are you doing? You, you're not you're not living right life properly uh, because these guys keep it real and they're a great bunch of people. I consider them family, and they bring it every week. And man, again, this is just another. They're new. They're guests. I know the guests, but I can't. I I will I will not. Uh, you know, give that information. That that is for them to do. It's big, and I think you're going to want to tune in at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Sunday. Uh, so King, thank you for being here as always. And I found those super chats. Uh, yeah, we had one. Great to tell you. Yeah, Damn we man. had one here. Uh, Gamer by choice who drops a super chat earlier drops an additional five dollars super chat. And says, could Jim Ryan be the cleanup CEO to get PlayStation ready for purchase? I worked at a company that did that, and this looks very similar. King, this is what you've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Raiden Blade drops a five dollars super chat. And says, I blame the PlayStation fanboys for running their mouth instead of running their wallets. Mm-hmm. Um, Fuzzy Belvedere, generous friend of the show, he drops an outstanding $5 Super Chat and says PlayStation's, PlayStation's Game Pass answer will be PlayStation.
PlayStation PS plus PS Now a plus Netflix for twenty dollars a month, and that would be killer. That would yeah, be, that'd be, be I, I would sign up for that in a freaking second. Um, Killantis drops a very generous ten dollars super chat and says, "Congrats on eight K boom. Day and date is huge for growth. If Xbox can get into Japan, that will be astronomical for the platform. Indeed, it, it will. And thank you for the generosity. And of course, the congratulations. Our good friend Dan the Man Cunningham drops a very generous five dollars yeah. super chat and says, "All hail Phil Dominus Maximus." Aurelius, biggest, oh, <laughs> biggest D Spencer. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and uh, let's see. I think I'm up to date. I believe I am. Yes. Oh, okay. So Paul Big Grant. Cloud. What's Paul. that? I think you missed Paul Grant. Where did I miss Paul Grant from? Said the end. So he's, he's the newest one. Uh, oh, okay. So you know what? I'm not seeing that. Let me just let me just grab <laughs> me, that. because I'm, 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 I'm on. A, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't mind. Uh, he dropped the five dollars super chat. He says, "Happy Friday, gamer fam! Great show as always. Boom! Have a great weekend. Hit that like button, peeps." Then Night Wolf three one eight six just dropped to five. He says, "Another great show. Boom! Congrats on AK Blood." Thank you, gentlemen, for that. Definitely appreciate that. And speaking of gentlemen, BitCloud, you know, you got a show coming up at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. And I think people are going to want to tune in because you're going to have some big opinions and your panel is going to match those big opinions. Tell everyone about where they could reach out to you and, of course, help you to get to 10,000 subs, brother. Oh, yeah, we're close. Uh, RGD Podcast, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, we got the one and only Solid Rev coming through. And, oh, uh, he's a good dude. We I got love a Solid lot Rev. to talk yeah. about for PlayStations, a lot of capital, which I know how it is. Uh, <laughs> with none but the truth from yours truly. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, David, you already know us, my brother. Good talking to you as always. Good, bro. Of course, Crispy uh, Bomb, Boom, and uh, Logan, good talking to you. But, yeah, um, enjoy your weekend. Can't wait to uh, get to this show, and I will see you guys next week. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here, BitCloud. Definitely appreciate it. And Logan Meyer, uh, you've been doing some great work on, of course, the Iron Lords podcast and uh, the podcast, uh, lordsofgaming.net. And uh, I love your pieces that bring um, opinion. Your opinion pieces are strong, and they all come with merit. Tell everyone where they can reach out to you on social media, but more importantly, Check out some of the work that you've been doing over with the Iron Lords. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It means a lot. Uh, it was nice to talk with everybody here today. It was good talking to you, BitCloud and Crispy and King David. And it's um, it's been a great time to be a gamer for sure. And then for reaching out to me on social media, you can find me at, at logmey 92 And um, I'm, Twitter's mainly where I hang out. And then... My pieces you can find at uh, Lognet, lordtogaming.net. And I actually have a big time interview coming this next week. I will have yes. Pope Art on. Oh, for, yes, um, the Xbox Pope. He's a good dude. This. So um, if you're into custom consoles, skins, um, designs, all the fun, cool stuff he does in the community, you'll definitely want to check that out. And yeah, it's been a pleasure, y'all. Well, just real quick for the camera, as you can see, I have a, a, a Pope Arts uh, Cyberpunk controller. I'm a big mm -hmm. supporter of him. He is a gentleman. Definitely get over there and support Pope Arts. Did he sign uh, with uh, NZXT? He, I believe he did. He definitely did something yeah. with Square Enix on the Outriders controllers, which is pretty dope. Uh, but yeah, you know, he's, he's doing some big things, and, and it's well-deserved. He's an amazing yeah, community member, yeah. and uh, it's a long time coming. But Crispy Bomb! Why don't you tell everyone about where they can reach out to you on social media and what other shows you are on? Oh, always a pleasure, gentlemen. The chat was yes, fire today. And uh, at Chrissy Bomb on Twitter, Chrissy Bomb 28 Xbox Live. I am pitching a double header Tuesday. Oh, oh, yeah, I just went there. Uh, yeah, I got Retro Renegade 7 p.m. And then I'll be joining Noof and the gang Ooh. gaming after dark at 10 p.m. So, yeah definitely check that out it should be fun and yeah we got thursday night 8 p.m the next podcast and of course we'll be back here on breakfast of boom 10 a.m fridays 
Well, thank you for being here. And of course, thank a big shout out to we had almost 700 people here, man. We topped out at seven at 674. Like, wow, that is freaking crazy. So thank you so much for being here, supporting this old man's dream. It's definitely appreciated. Of course, I have to thank the unbelievable amount of super chats that continue to come in. I mean, my goodness, the the generosity is just not to be believed. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. And of course, all of the well wishes for me hitting AK. We are marching towards uh, 10K. And folks, I'll say it now because we got a minute. Uh, Mrs. Boomstick and I have decided that on our march to 10K, uh, what we have decided to do to give back to the community is for the next couple of months, hopefully we can hit 10K before uh, E3 2021, which is the mid of June. Both of us have decided that we're go we're going to have a massive giveaway to two a grand prize and a second runner up prize. The grand prize being an Xbox Series X with a year of Game Pass, and the runner up prize is going to be an Xbox Series S with a year of Game Pass. That is almost over a thousand dollars worth nice. of. Uh, free, uh, you know, obviously Kill. our way of giving back, our ways of saying thank you for supporting Double Barrel Gaming, and that's right, once we hit 10k, uh, I will be uh, picking, you know, obviously from the 10,000 subscribers, and we'll be announcing those winners, so if you're not subscribed and you want to be a part of this, you gotta be a channel, uh, not a channel member, a subscriber, you gotta just subscribe to the channel, and you have to be a subscriber for more than 60 days, those are the only rules that we have because we're not going to have anyone jump in at the last minute. Just well, I'll say this. If I win, I will re-roll it and give it back to you guys. Well, I definitely appreciate that. And thank you. That's very kind of you, King. I definitely appreciate that. But listen, folks, I'm going to close out today's show with something that's important to me. Hopefully, one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dear old dad taught us when we were kids. And I think now. More than ever, it's super important. And he said, son, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. Live by those rules, and I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone, and we'll see you next week on the newest episode of Breakfast with Boom.